This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Mason, you're not going to believe it. We've got two sponsors this week. <laughs> this is a very last minute edition, but I think people are going to love it because we're doing a bloody giveaway as well. Oh. Are you familiar, knowing that you are? Are familiar with it with Lenovo Star Wars Jedi Challenges. Yeah, it's an augmented reality game that runs using augmented reality technology, Man. meaning you're immersed in the world, but you're also still in the world that you're already in. Man, I was all over augmented reality, or augmented reality technology several years ago when it was brand new and boring. <laughs> remember that? <laughs> I remember that. You could point your phone at a building and it'd give you the Wikipedia entry for that building. Throw your phone in the bin. Yep. You know what? Don't, because you need it for this, obviously. need it for this now, now that it's come full circle and it's exciting again. Exactly. So we've got one to give away, which I'll mention in a, in a minute. But basically, I've done a YouTube video on it uh, previously, highlighting the whole thing and how it works and all the different games that are within it. But essentially, there's three modes for the moment. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because there's, there's free upgrades coming. Uh, but basically, the first one is Hollow Chess. You remember Hollow Chess from Star Wars, Absolutely right? Absolutely, I do. It's Hollow Chess. You've seen it. It's Hollow Chess. Yes. So it's like it's in front. It's, it's hard. But it's to not. It's not. It's it's called, it's called something else. Right? It's called Dejaric, but I think they've they've tweaked the rules to make it more not like nonsense. chess. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it looked it looked fine. It looked great in the movie. But how does but any what of are the it rules? Work? Yeah. Exactly. No, no. It's very straightforward. But it's also there's like levels to it. Oh, yeah. Wow. In terms of in terms of difficulty. Uh, the other one is uh, strategic combat, which I think is my favorite. Which is uh, it's basically a real time strategy game that plays out on the floor in front of you, where you've got a, a series of troops on your side and a series of troops on the other side, and they battle against each other, and you use your kind of lightsaber to point them. That it's oh yeah, the, the controller is like a lightsaber as well. That's like a right. Yeah. Like a really <laughs> one to over one. That, but it's a one to one replica. It looks incredible. Of, yeah. yeah. Uh, where you can kind of command the troops and, and, and move them all around and like you can drop in a Jedi to kind of turn the tide. You can control ships to like gun down like a whole lot of droids or clones or whatever. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Make your own choices. Gun down whoever you want. <laughs> in the game. Yes. <laughs> and the last one is, which I think is probably the people's favourite, it's it's the lightsaber combat. Yeah, where basically, that's the crown jewel. Yeah. You see the lightsaber blade ignite in front of you and then like a Darth Vader or a Darth Maul or a Kylo Ren or there's some other characters that I don't want to spoil here. Uh, Dexter Jetster. Dexter Jetster. He's a big mm-hmm. No, he's not. But Watto. Yeah, Watto. And you fight them in your living room or the area that you're in. Yeah. And it, it's hard, kind of hard to explain without experiencing it, but it is. It's really incredible. I haven't got to it yet, but it sounds wild. Yeah, well, we're going to do it right after this, Mason, yes. if you don't mind. But you've seen my video. Look, people are confused about what it is. I've done a video on it. I'll link it below. Also, just mentioned because uh, this is an Australian, it's not an Australian competition. But mm-hmm. there's a, if you're from Australia, that you can get it from Harvey Norman. Uh, t- some of the two stores you can get it from is Harvey Norman and JB Hi-Fi. I'll link that below. But it's available uh, the world over. Side note, the other day, sure. I, was, I was driving along and I saw a yellow Lamborghini and the license plate was JB Hi-Fi. You met Mr. J. You saw Mr. JB Hi-Fi. But that's that's because JB <laughs> Hi-Fi, like the, 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 it's, it's, they're yellow stores. Yeah. So did the guy who, did the guy who, Found a J- you can cut this out. Did no. the guy? Did the guy? This is all part of the, the guy f- who found a JB Hi-Fi get so rich that he then bought a, a Lamborghini in the color of his stores and then get the license plate JB Hi-Fi. Or did he already have the license plates? Right. Do you exactly. think the guy who owns Copper Art had a copper car with the yes. plates Copper Art on yes. this? <laughs> or did a guy was just a rich guy who just bought a yellow Lamborghini and was like, I'll, I'll just Let's have the license plate. This. I just yeah. really love JB Hi-Fi. <laughs> Because either is equally likely and I think so. completely insane, right? I completely agree. Anyway, big fans. Big fans guys, yeah. right? uh, but basically also, as I mentioned, there's downloadable content, content coming down the line for free. They've kind of told me what it is, but I can't say because it's not confirmed. Can you tell me yet. afterwards? Yeah, I'll tell you afterwards. Okay, cool. But yeah, I'm, and then I'll tell everyone. But yeah, so because it runs off your phone, you just, it downloads to your app. So it's, it's free. There's yeah. no DLC that you have to pay for. It's all it's all. You buy the unit right and then you yeah. get it. Mm-hmm. It's a great Christmas gift. But listen, Mason, we've got a Christmas gift for our audiences. Uh, we were supposed to decide on a hashtag for this before the show, and we didn't. So we're going to have to think of one on the fly. But basically, uh, if you could post something to Twitter. The Twitters. The Twitter uh, to myself or Mason, or you probably don't even have to. You can just use the, ha- the hashtag, something to do with Jedi Mason. Let's <sighs> go. What about, yes. what about Jedi skills? Yes, and then you you're, and then you have to show like a post a video video or a picture or a meme or a joke or anything. Are you at suggesting all? that they spell Jedi skills the regular way? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, Mason, not at all. It's skills with a Z. So this will be hashtag. Are you saying they should spell it Jedi skills with a Z the regular way? <laughs> Three Zs. That's, no, that's too confusing. There probably Jedi skills already exists on, on Twitter. I'm going to find out. <laughs> okay, so if you hashtag Jedi skills, that's J-E-D-I-S-K-I-L-L-Z. Thank you. Post a picture of yourself doing a Jedi thing, but a joke, a meme, a clip from the movies, whatever you want to do. It can be anything at all. We're going to pick one completely at random. Uh, Don't do anything dangerous. No, nothing dangerous. Keep it, keep it all, buddy, safe and something that you'd be happy your mum to, to show your mum and she'd be proud of you. Mm. Yeah. And we'll announce the winner next week. Nice. So, yeah, that's, it's, that's a, it's a good prize. It's, it's a good, good prize, so right? Get it if you want to get it. As I said, it's linked below to those stores. Hashtag Jedi skills <laughs> with a Z on the end mm. instead of an S and then you can, you can win that thing. Nice. Let's move on with the show. Mason. Okay, let's move on with the show. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News Shoot Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Weekly Planet, official podcast of nothing. Planet, I don't know. We just do it. It's just we make this podcast. Okay, yep. what do you want? It's the official podcast of this room. <laughs> That's right. For now. Well, Claire does hers in here as well. Oh, all right. It's the co-podcast of this room. So you, wow. So you, okay. All right. Could you, could you in post? Could you insert a whip noise for yourself? Did, will that involve any effort on my behalf? Yes. Then I will not. Okay, well, this, just everybody imagine a whip noise because this isn't even the official podcast of this room. Is that because we're getting cracking, Mason? We're getting on yeah, with the news? Yeah, we're getting cracking on with the news and the content, uh, precisely. I should also mention, my name's James, also known as Mr. Sunday, with me as always my co-host, Nick Mason. I'm here. Big week for Star Wars, Mason. What do you mean? i got something for you. Ah, oh, that's right. Now this is all uh, right. Here we go. This is not really a spoiler. Uh, we'll talk about it more later. But M- Mason and I made a bet concerning the Last Jedi. If you know what that bet was and you haven't seen it, it doesn't ruin the film in any way. It was a ridiculous thing that's never. Well, it ruined happen. the film for me. <laughs> yeah, sure. And as uh, oh, I as think it came pretty close to it happening. got a little bit close. Mm. But as punishment, nevertheless, <laughs> rules are rules. As punishment, Mason has to wear my Justice League y- lanyard from the Melbourne is all in Justice League premiere. Now I love li- wearing this every week. Mm, yeah. But <laughs> so, so I'm happy. Wow. I'm sad to see it go. So this is bad for you, but all right, let's put this <laughs> bad boy on. And I do mean bad boy. <laughs> I mean, I had fun with it, so I don't know what your problem is, Mason. Oh, it was a bad, terrible movie. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened there. Oh, you know what? I like the weight to it. It's nice. Don't you walk out of here with that, Mason. Oh, that's mine. I'm putting my fingerprints all no. over it. This isn't mint no. anymore. Oh, you thought this was mint condition. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Okay, oh, Mason. 6 p.m. arrivals for a 6.30 screening. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a good time for fun cinema, is it? Midnight's a fun time for fun cinema. Oh, speaking of which, uh, if you're listening to this, Mm. uh, I went to the midnight screening at Knox with our friend Steel Saunders of the Steel Wars podcast. Yes, yes, yes. He's already put up three podcasts about that. Seems too many. Yeah, I haven't listened to watched any other reviews as of yet concerning this, so I haven't I haven't got around to that yet. But you're Mm. in that, aren't you? I am in that. Yeah, Yeah. along with. Let's see. Some, some of the other, Sands Pants fellas. Some of the Sands Pants fellas. My friend, uh, comedian Demi Lardner. Yep, yep. Uh, the mu- musician Paul Dempsey of yeah, the band Something for Cats. Yeah, yeah. So uh, weird that he likes yeah. Steel. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Got him. That's right. Yeah. Uh, good fun time. Yeah, God, I'm, no, I'm looking forward to listening to it. Mm-hmm. And that was right after the screening, wasn't it? So you are riding Immediately high afterwards, or yeah. low. We'll find yeah. out. We will, won't we? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, look, we got to talk about this Disney Fox news, Mason. Oh yeah. No, it was it was a, a really. Do we have to? It's only a sixty billion dollar deal. Well, if we're being picky, it's fifty two billion dollars. Oh, was it? Yes. Oh, well, small potatoes. Are we being picky? Yes. Okay. Well, then it was fifty two billion dollars. Okay. Uh, so uh, everybody's heard this, I'm sure by now. Uh, Disney, Disney have bought various properties from Fox, that, excluding their news programs and various sport affiliated. Because who wants those? Taking a stand. Somebody somebody probably wants them somewhere. Well, mm. Fox Murdoch wants them, doesn't I he? I guess so, yeah. yeah. So they're moving away from this side of the entertainment industry. I mean, they're still going to be doing fiction, Mason, if you know <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. Okay, do you want a list of properties of what they've got? Yes. I've got a lot here. Okay. So strap yourself in. This is now what Disney owns. And then we'll talk about whether or not this is a good thing or whatnot. We'll see. Yeah, or exactly. Ready? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Star Wars A New Hope. That was, uh, that was a shared distribution with... 20th Century Fox, because okay, that was yeah. the original deal George Lucas made, uh-huh. now with Disney. The Alien franchise, 
Planet of the Apes. Feel free to stop me in any of these if you've got, you've got anything to say. Or okay. I can just rattle these off. Simpsons, Family Guy, Die Hard, Independence Day 1 and 2. Oh, hello. They took both. Yeah, oh, really? That's, <laughs> yeah. Well, but that's like when you you get you, you go to JB Hi-Fi, you look at the double pack yeah. of Blues Brothers and Blues Brothers 2000, and you're like, I'd rather pay more just to get Blues Brothers 1. Exactly. With you. Kingsman, they took them both. Mm, all right. <laughs> Buffy, X-Files, Avatar, which is going to be interesting, uh, Predator, Ice Age, Goosebumps, 24, uh, what do we got here? Nine one one. No idea what that is. is. American Dad. American- oh, it's the emergency services number in America. They own that now. <laughs> <laughs> so you call up, you get Dan Castellaneta doing a Homer Simpson voice. You know what I'm going to do, Mason? I'm going to. It feels echo in here. I'm going to. Yep. Remember last week we dragged a chair in to cut oh, the yeah. echo. Yeah. Do, do a good old fashioned chair drag. Levens didn't make those throw rugs for us that he, we said he was going to do. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, James is struggling getting his chair inside the man cave. It's, a regular it's not though, but it's like one of those videos of a puppy that can't quite, that is holding a big stick and it can't get through the door and hasn't figured out how to turn the stick. Oh wow, this is, he's bringing in a couch mattress situation. Okay, terrific. He's brought in some bales of hay. Okay, how are we sounding now? Mm, seems about the same. About much the same, you say? Oh, no, okay. Maybe a little bit. Mm. Uh, what, I was, what I was up to, I was up to 9-11, wasn't I? Yes. They didn't buy 9-11. They didn't buy 9-11. The, the, okay. The terrible tragedy. Uh, American Dad, American Horror Story, Cocoon, Dr. Doolittle, Empire, Fargo. Cocoon? Cocoon. Oh, sweet Cocoon reboots. You better believe it. The Fly, Fresh Off the Boat, Futurama, Ghosted, The Gifted, Home Alone, Homeland, The Last Man on Earth. That's a great show. LA to Vegas, Life in Pieces, MASH. <laughs> Gonna take a breath. We take a, We should take a breath at Mash though, because I love Mash. So let's just drink in Mash. Mm. Winchester. No idea. Alan Alder. Oh, BJ I thought. Oh, I was, for a second, I thought that was a, a, a. Do you think they got the Radar spin-off? That one pilot they yeah, made. Yeah, exactly. What was it called again? I think it was just called Radar. Do you think they've got After Mash? The, That's what I'm thinking <laughs> of. I guess, yeah, I'm sure they've had After. Yeah. If they didn't have After Mash, they, they've got After yeah. Mash. The Mick. Night at the Museum, The Omen, The Orville, The Peanuts Movie, The Resident, Rio, Romancing the Stone, Speechless, Star, This Is Us. And of course, people of this show will probably are uh, most excited or not excited about X-Men Fantastic Four, uh, Deadpool, which are the Fox-owned uh, comic book properties that some of which are good some of the time. Mm-hmm, correct. Bob Iger has said that that who's the CEO of, of Disney and he's going to be staying on till 2021. He was planning on leaving a little bit early, but he's going to oversee this transition. He said, though, no, we're, we're, it looks like we're going to be, we're definitely heavily considering and doing R-rated properties. Hello. And Disney have done R-rated properties before, though, because they've done them through like Miramax and when, you know, they're not a good company, are they? <laughs> sure, yeah. Are they? Is that the one? No, that's not Weinstein, is it? Miramax, uh, it, it, well, it was. I don't know if it still is. Great, good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but anyway, so look, I think Disney know that they'll make money and Disney are about making money. So Correct. I think if they think it'll Aren't make... Aren't they a dream factory? I mean, sure, they're also a dream factory, Mason, mm-hmm. but they're also about making money like this podcast. Oh, we're sure, a yeah. dream... dream we're not, primarily we're a, fact, a dream factory, We're yeah. a dream cupboard. <laughs> That's <laughs> correct. Cupboard filled with old dusty brooms. Uh-huh. We're a dream sweatshop is what we <laughs> yeah, are ultimately. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I think when you when you see when they'd have a look at the numbers that like Deadpool did and how well Logan did it, like critically as well. Yep. Obviously, they'd be considering uh, what what's going on there. Exactly, and it's not like I think for the the vast majority of people probably won't even be aware this has happened. No, I don't think so. Yeah, and I mean Marvel movies don't have a Disney logo at the start, do they? I don't believe so. No, no. so they're not going to start putting one in front of Deadpool. No. Or maybe they are because they're going to turn the genre on its head. Can you imagine such a world? Oh, yeah. Now, the little he comes out, he he opens the little window of the castle, he sticks his head out. And he goes, look at my balls. Exactly, and then they jingle. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. He'll say, look at my tinker balls, is what he'll say. (laughs) He probably will say Mm -hmm, that. Yeah. I think, don't you think it would be funny or interesting if they did a Deadpool PG-13 movie and just bleep every swear word that would be funny and yeah. then deadpool's just furious throughout the whole thing so they could make an r-rated one but they and then maybe at the end he just goes off the chain and just says whatever that could be fun i, I think like that, that could be yeah. i think you could you could play with the genre you could flip it on its head say exactly like yeah. if, if, but we joke about that but that worked more than often than it oh did yeah it did yeah, yeah i know yeah yeah i'm on the fence about this uh in t- well even in terms of this is too many properties for disney to make 
this like that's a lot of good properties that I want to see. Cocoon for Cocoon one. Cocoon for one. How are they going to be able to make a lot of these? Or uh, like uh, the director of Logan, uh, something. I was going to say Gavin Hood, but he did the bad Wolverine mm, film. Yeah. He said that if if you know say the X Men are going to to Marv to into the Marvel universe, then you're probably going you're going to get less X Men films because they're only they're not going to do. Six a year, they'll, they're going to do three, maybe four max. Yeah, right, exactly, yeah. So does it mean that more are going to go to television? Are we going to get more films in general? What do you think? In many ways, all of this is up in the air and we don't know. <laughs> oh, Mason. What we could do is, com- is wait until we actually get some yeah. concrete information. Or we could speculate about it now. Ah, well, you know, we, we haven't got that much time, do we? That's true. Ah, uh, look. Uh, While it's up in the air, though, there's very there's the very real possibility that something's going to get flipped on its head. Let me tell you that much. <laughs> that's very true. Yeah. I mean, yeah, then, you know... But, Setting aside for a moment that, you know, as a merger, people are probably going to lose their jobs and it's we're approaching this weird entertainment monopoly yeah. where there's going to be one company that makes all our entertainment yeah. for future, mm. who knows? For, forever. Forever, exactly. I think also you will, as a result of this, you, we're going we're gonna to see a, a counterculture kind of Hippies are coming back, is what you're saying. I hope not, but <laughs> but I think that there will be a reaction to this in terms of seeing things that we're not seeing from Disney. You know, you look like punk, punk rock came out of whatever the opposite of that was. <laughs> do you do you know what I'm saying though? Yes. So I think <laughs> what a great example, right? I know, I'm, absolutely. <laughs> but I think I think there will be people that hate this so much. And a void will be filled that Disney is not doing by somebody else. Whether that be, say, the Mark Millar Netflix comic book properties yeah, right, uh-huh. or something that we haven't even thought of yet. Yeah. I don't think you should be too worried about this. we're just going to get sanitized entertainment from Disney forever because something will rear its head if yeah. this does not go well. I even, well. I've read an article yesterday that was basically, okay, now that uh, Disney's acquired all this Fox stuff, that the future of, of these this prop all the Marvel properties especially is just going to be kind of sterile and the same. Mm. But I think based on the last few movies we have seen. Yeah. Because it was like, oh, you know, Logan, you know, Deadpool and Logan, they flipped the genre on its head in various ways. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And it's not going to happen if they bring it to Marvel. But I think based on the last couple of Marvel Studios productions, I think that Disney has learned that their profits are going to take a dip if they, yeah. if everything is cookie cutter now. Yeah, voice like the voice of the director in particular and a specific vision counts. Yes, and people mm-hmm. people definitely take notice. Mm. So yeah, look, like you like we said, it's it's up in the air. I don't I don't love it. Yep, that's for certain. It could go any number of ways. I'm just I don't like it when any company has everything. Like that's that's not good. Often. Yeah, right. Like not all the Fox movies are good by a long shot, but they were getting better. Yeah, right, right. Know? So, but that's that's not. I mean, there's, there's other things of like concerning people keeping their jobs, what divisions are being shut down. Mm-hmm. Like this, there's a whole lot of factors that. What we are don't they going to cancel? Exactly. Are they going to cancel that Cocoon reboot? Are they going to cancel the Orville Cocoon Two? <laughs> there already was a Cocoon Two. There was. Was Gutenberg in it? I don't know. Yeah, uh, and I guess. Are they going to cancel... Hang on, I have to Google Cocoon to... I don't. <laughs> are they going to... Are they going to reboot the X-Men in the Marvel... I mean, I assume they're going to reboot a lot of it in the Marvel Universe, but are they going to... I think they should. Yeah. I think you could keep Deadpool. I mean, Wolverine's gone. Yeah. Also, this... I think it's going to be like a year or so of going over the fine print and determining if this is classed as a monopoly. So this isn't going to... Like, all the Fox movies that are already being lined up, they're going to still happen. Yeah, right. There's going to be a shift in about a year, year and a half Mm -hmm. when all this kind of gets confirmed. Yeah, right. Gambit's done, surely. (laughs) You know what I mean? They're not doing that now, are they? Or... or, I don't know. I'll mention if we missed out on Gambit. That movie we were were definitely not going to (laughs) get. Do you think they will give us a new Wolverine? Yeah, I think so. Who do you think think it could be? Well, actually, I've got a Twitter question about it. So why don't you hold your horses for once in your life? I will hold my bloody horses. I was talking about horses tonight. Horses are terrifying. When I rode a horse in New Zealand, Mason, I did a Lord of the Rings little tour. I've traveled a bit. I don't like to brag, but, you know, I've seen a bit of the world. Uh, I thought they were just like, stupidly, like a big dog. Oh, yeah. Mm Because I know how to handle a dog. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah. I can pat a dog. I know when a dog's friendly or whatever. Also, a dog won't kick you through the head. 
Oh, for sure, like yeah. a horse. You yeah. know what I mean? Even if it could, it probably wouldn't want to. Yeah, exactly. But, but a, a horse can and but will a horse, I'm and like, wants to. I think horses are not as smart as dogs as well. So I'm like, I don't know. Would he pad a horse? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, I don't know. But I, I just don't stand at the back of the horse. Also, yeah. don't stand at the front. because Also, will... you can feed a dog from your hand yeah. in any configuration, in any <laughs> hand configuration yeah. you want, right? And the dog will just eat the thing. If that's... it's a friendly dog, yeah. yeah. But a, a horse, if you don't hand it the food in precisely the correct way, it'll bite your hand. Off, <laughs> won't even won't even slow down. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Horses notoriously uh, carnivorous. Who would you? I don't know if this is part of the question you've got from Twitter. Sure. Ah, uh, wh- what would you like to see? What combination would you like to see? What team up would you like to see? Wow. Should we save this to the end? Yeah, save should, it till yeah. the end. Yeah. All right. All right. R- remind me though, okay. Mason. Yeah, because I just think we need to push forward. People aren't here to listen to your musings on com- combinations of things, Mason. <laughs> What's your favorite combination of vegetables, though? Uh, probably Your peas, man, I know that Yeah, peas, maybe a peas and a mashed potato Sure it's pretty good, yeah Okay uh-huh, yeah. Alright, it's good yeah. We should save that for the end as well Okay, alright, alright Because right. yeah. I have more than that I'll, I'll have. I'll change my opinion <laughs> Okay Over the course of the show, I'm sure Please. I mean, that's it's a pretty basic a basic combo Yeah, I so. think so Yeah Have you read Kill or Be Killed? Yes, I love it uh, We talked about it on the show Yeah, I thought you had Yes uh, It's like Spider-Man with a shotgun Well, he sort of dresses like a spider He's not Spider-Man Look, it's a guy with a shotgun In a, in a <laughs> yes. mask that kind of looks to like the Spider-Man extent, To the extent that Spider-Man <laughs> is like the burglar that murdered his uncle <laughs> Yes, kill or be killed is like Spider-Man But in every other respect, no, it is It is not like that uh, The John Wick director, one of them I think it was two yep. of them, I don't know Is uh-huh. making that film Yeah Seem good to you? Sounds really good, yeah Correct. So this is uh, Headshots kill or be, for all Yeah, kill or be killed Ed, Bu- Ed Brewbreaker. Uh, it almost sounds like not just you, but that's names being said wrong, isn't it? Though, yeah, like it, yeah. I did say it wrong in in my own defence. Just that. Oh, did you? It's Brewbaker. Brewbaker. There we go. Uh, what he did you say Brewbaker or something. Yeah, bu- Doesn't matter. Yeah. Sorry, keep going. We'll save it to the end. Keep yeah. going. Uh, and and it's about a guy who may or may not have sold his soul to a demon uh, to cure himself from being. Uh, uh, Sick. Yeah. And in exchange, he has to kill one person a month. Ah, the classic Spider-Man origin. Exactly. That's right. (laughs) Yeah. Great. I'm excited for that. It is Brubaker's uh, finest work, probably. Really? Wow. He's done some good stuff as well. That's right. It's very good. Cool. Uh, Ready Player One has a new trailer. Did you see that? I saw it uh, the probably two or three dozen times it was posted in the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates group. Fantastic place if you yeah. want to post a thing again and again, I assume. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Though there's As we're talking about the show, there's now, Levens is now kind of, and there's a few admins kind of filtering, so it's not like duplicated posts and, and whatnot. Correct, it's, yes. It's like 50 posts an hour, is that if you've been If you've been in there and uh, you were like, boy, there sure is a lot of stuff happening in here, uh, give it another try. It's calmed right down. It's calmed right down. Yeah, yeah, we've, yeah. We've, got, we've got a handle on it. If uh, your post doesn't get approved, that's obviously Andrew Levens' fault. It's Andrew Levens' fault, yeah. yeah. So don't don't tweet at us. Mm. Tweet at bloody Andrew Tweet Levens, at Lev Dog. Yeah. 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 <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, what do you think of the trailer, though? It's not. It's a Look, it's in a movie that is aggressively not for me. <laughs> Based on a Even book. though it seems like it's for... It would be right up our alley, but I feel exactly the same yeah, way. Yeah, look. And I think that is... And again, I haven't read the book, but yeah. I have read... Uh, friends I know have reviewed the book. I've read excerpts from the book, and it seems like a book that is, and it's it's something that is divides a lot of people. A lot of people I think are like this is fun and great. Yeah. But having read some excerpts, I'm like this is aggressively not for me. Right. Is it too? Look, it's bloody the Deloyan. Look. Well, it's just to me. It to me it reads just like here's a list of references, and it's a it's a. It's a guy who wins because he uncritically knows all the references. I imagine if you knew all the references. I don't know any of the references. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's just I'm a, maybe I'm a man with a bad memory. And look, there's two guys who I'm sure are regularly yelled at every week by listeners for not knowing basic character that's names why people or references. Listen. Yeah, exactly. To yell at us. Yeah. Maybe wait. We, we just can't relate to this guy. But it doesn't yeah. seem like it's for me. Well, even looking at the trailer, there's. I mean, as someone who's always looking for a bloody reference or an Easter egg, I'm yeah, like. That's right. That's too much. I'm not even. I don't even know where to start with that because every frame has like Roger Rabbit and the DeLorean <laughs> and the Iron Giant and Deathstroke and Mickey Mouse and whatever yeah, right. the fuck else. I'm like, I don't. Yeah. Know. Like, if anything, I think maybe the also I hate his avatar. Yeah. The right. Right. Weird anime. Yeah. CGI no, totally. man. I think uh, I will. I will probably see this, and I imagine I will like it more than I. If I, we should point out when we say I will see this for something like this, I guess we we have to see everything. Yes, sure. But that's something you would see regardless. Is what is that? No, what you're I probably wouldn't see it. Regardless. Okay, no, well, I'd okay. probably wait for Netflix. Maybe. Yeah, right. So, uh, I think it'll probably. I think I would enjoy this more than 
reading the book. Yeah, I know you're probably right. Yeah, look, I'm not saying it's going to be terrible, but that's yeah. not something I'm excited for. I do love that that poster they released, though. Did you see that? Oh, he's got a really long leg. <laughs> he's got a really long, long. leg. It's yeah. one of the worst like screw ups I've ever seen on a movie poster. Like yeah, that yeah. Lara Croft Tomb Raider Velociraptor neck. Yeah, yeah. Like you could kind of go, I guess that could be a person, but this is just like his foot is like. Six feet long. Yeah, right. It's in- oh, his shit. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. So there's a, there's an excerpt on the about him, like his his vehicle in the in the book, and he's like, I've got I, it's a DeLorean. I've put Ghostbusters stickers on the side, and I've put a kit, you know, strip on the front, and I've got the I've got a bloody um, oscillation overthruster so I can fly through walls, and it's got it's just a pile on of references on this thing. Gotcha. First of all. If you've got the greatest car, what what's the challenge? If you're just the guy who's piled on the <laughs> it's, most it's references, putting on, it's putting on God mode. Yeah, but I also I read a tweet and it was like, imagine if this were these were all girl references. Like, imagine if somebody wrote this book and they're like, uh, uh, yeah, I'm I'm in my Polly Pocket car and I'm and I've covered it in Lisa Frank uniform unicorn stickers and blah blah blah. People would be like, what is this garbage? <laughs> But apparently, you can do it the other way around. Good, I'm yeah. glad, Mason. Me too. You know, what, yeah. More power to us. That's what I say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mason, anyway, there might be some credence to your. Anyway, if you if you love this stuff, just enjoy it. Yeah, it's Don't, fine. Do, who cares what we yeah, think? Exactly, it doesn't matter, and that goes for all things. Mm. Uh, now, Mason, this is a, might come in handy later in the episode. Definitely. Uh, you had a theory uh, postulating who was in the. Iron Man suit for Avengers Infinity War. Yes. This, is, this may be a spoiler for Avengers Infinity War. Uh, everything's time-coded below, so you're welcome to skip this. Uh, your, your theory, and I did a YouTube video on it as well, or oh, Matt made it, I should say, was that... Thanks, Matt. When, uh, when, I, when Thanos punches Iron Man, that you didn't you thought it was uh, Pepper Potts. I think that's Pepper Potts, yeah. yeah. I'm not the only one who's, who's theorized this, I think, but... But you were the first. Maybe. And the last. You'll be the last, mate. <laughs> Good, You'll yeah. kill the rest of them. Nice. Uh, but she posted an image uh, to probably Instagram or Goop, I don't know. Where <laughs> it's probably in her Goop <laughs> newsletter, yeah. <laughs> where she's she's got those, the mocap pants on. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Which uh, which kind of, it adds a little bit of uh, credence to, to your theory. Ooh. Yeah, Imagine so. if they add a little credence to that theme. To that that scene. Creed or credence? Credence. Carry on my way. That's Kansas. <laughs> it's Kansas, but I appreciate. I, do know. I, just I respect to sing that where you, I respect where you were going with that. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't really have anything else to say about that. Mm. Uh, but but there we bloody go. There you go. I've kept I've kept the news light this week, Mason. I hope you don't mind because I know people want to get into Star Wars. We've got one more sponsor though, as mentioned. Oh yeah, nice. Uh, it's an old sponsor of ours, but it's an oldie but a goodie. Old, very and much. It won't a goodie. make you look old. It will make you look. Goody. Goody and young, or the age you are, but you're in nice clothes. Nice. That's a ringing endorsement if ever I've heard of Well, I mean, if you could not suggest to the listeners that if they purchase these items, they will make you look physically younger, because that would be weird. No, that's... That's obviously not true. Right. And I would never say such a thing unless they paid me more money to do so. Absolutely. Then we would, yeah. <laughs> uh, so We Mac- will tell lies for money. That's <laughs> <laughs> where we're going with this. We should point out to people as well, we turned out a lot of stuff. Yes. Like the, the stuff that we advertise for is we carefully consider it over weeks. Yes. Except for the Lenovo one, which was very late in the day, but I'd already done it and I already like it or whatever. Yeah. You know what it is as well. That, that was a kind of late thing, but... I t- we turned down so many crap mobile games. There's, sure. a, there's I've turned down lots of money to to spruik universities in the US for film schools, Ooh, yeah, which right. I'm like, I don't know this school. If I knew a little bit more about it, then yeah, I, right, I'd right, happily right. do it. But yeah. I don't want somebody to see if if you, if, if your if if one of our universities uh, <laughs> asked us paid us to to spruik their university. If Ballarat University, did you go to Ballarat? I didn't go to Ballarat. Ban- no. Bendigo in, in ba- Ballarat. In yeah. Ballarat. One of the okay. one of the two unis I went to. All yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Because okay, just on the university thing though, because if I'm going to spruik a school or we're going to spruik a school, first of all, I need to know it kind of well enough. Because if somebody buys, say, a t-shirt, it won't ruin their life with student debt. <laughs> yes, so correct. if I'm going to advertise something like that, it's yeah, something yeah. that you really kind of want to. You know, really do your research really do on your that. Research. Yeah. So oh. yeah, so just people know because I think I made an offhand comment on Dugawan that we did a couple of ads to to buy the domain for Planet Broadcasting or whatever. 
everything we do is yeah. something mm-hmm. we believe in or also people things that we think people So if we like, end yeah. up doing an ad for a university, mm. it probably means we went back to school Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield you style. You know? And that's the thing, I'm not even against that, but I just need to know more about it. Exactly, you know what yeah. I mean? We've got to pledge a fraternity. It was a lot of money. We've got to go to a, go <laughs> wear a toga. Yeah. 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 Okay, here we go. Mac Weldon, though, <laughs> great company. They believe in smart design, premium fabrics and simple shopping. It's got a great website. We've both been there. We've got a bunch of their clothes. I know you do, Mason. I do. I love them. I love the tees. Do you love the tees I also too? love the tees. Good. Excellent. I mean, I, I love the tees. I love the underwear. I love the socks. Those are my favorite things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they also do... I've got a hoodie as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, do, they do sweats. Yes. They don't call them sweats here. We call them tracky dacks. We call them tracky dacks, precisely. Yeah. They're good for relaxing on your couch. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. They're also famously antimicrobial, all these products. Oh, perfect. What does that mean, Mason? What does that mean to you? I mean, what does it mean? Not what it means to you. I don't care what it means to you. Give me a literal definition. Oh, what? I don't even know what he wants anymore. I'm so confused. <laughs> He's hit me with so many options there. They, 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 bloody, they, bloody, they don't attract microbes. Exactly. They, yeah. they, they repel them. They feel anything. and smell fresh mm. for way longer than a exactly. regular T-shirt. I'm not wearing one right now. No. And I hate you. Wow, you look sickly and pallid. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. unrelated because that's oh. what we know. <laughs> but, but yeah. Also, uh, if you don't like if you don't like your first pair, they're happy to refund them, and you get to keep it. And yeah, there's man. no questions asked there. Uh, so they do, uh, as I said, they do underwear, socks, shirts that look good. They perform well too. They're good for working out, going to work, going on dates, just sitting on the couch life. in your tracky dacks. You better believe it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the sweats. Yeah, that's right. Uh, in everyday life. Now, if you go to MacWeldon.com, you can actually get twenty percent off by using the promo code Planet. That's us. Which is a lot. Mm-hmm. That's MacWeldon.com. It's a very good deal. A planet. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you very much, Mason. Oh, <laughs> you're very welcome. Okay, we got to get. We got to move into okay, Star let's, Wars. Let's the burn last through Jedi. this. We're not burning, Mason. We're going to have an in-depth conversation. No, you're on the clock. We've got three minutes. Okay, yeah. here we go. Okay. Uh, just quickly, let's talk numbers. Do you mind? No, let's go for it. Okay, start. It's going to be the probably the second biggest opening in the U.S. history. The weekend Wait, uh, of Star Wars or ever of ever set okay, behind wow. Force Awakens. Right, For, Force Awakens was the first movie in December to crack a hundred million. Hmm. Avatar did like seventy, but then <laughs> over time it did five billion, two billion, or whatever. It All did. right, okay. Uh, so they reckon it's going to settle around two hundred fifteen million, right? Ish, which is. I mean, it could go higher or lower. I think this movie might have a lot of repeat viewing. Yeah, exactly. I've seen it twice. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't normally see things twice, but there was some things I kind of wanted I to... I think the most common comment I heard after watching it at midnight the other day was, I think I have to see it again. Absolutely. So yeah. maybe that's that's their marketing trick now. Potentially, yeah. Uh, the critical reception initially, or even all the way through, it's... Very positive. Mm. Uh, it, the, the initial reviews were great and all the reviews that have trickled in from then, including mine, have been really positive as well. There's things that I don't like about it, which we will talk about. It. But as far as fan reaction response goes, it's very divisive. Isn't it though? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. And there is a lot of kind of, there's a lot of discussion in terms of uh, these are the things I don't like about it and this is why I don't think it's a good film and et cetera. But there's a lot of people just having a big old cry about it <laughs> also. Because yeah. of course you're not you're allowed to not like a thing or like a thing. But uh, just when the people like pack it and they're like, I've had enough. This is this is the Star I've Wars. Seen, I've I, seen some t-shirts burned. Yeah, like, I mean, I just, you, you don't have to like a thing and you can not watch a thing. That's mm, totally yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also maybe like for exa- like Star Wars Rebels, I don't really like that show. Like it's fine, but also it's not for me. Right. So I kind of sort of watch Who it is sometimes. It for? I think kids? it's more of a kids show. Yeah. Okay, right. But not necessarily because there's also references and there's things in it that happen that it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't talk about Star Wars <laughs> Rebels. It's good for it's good for good kids. Good for what else? But yeah. then I look at like Voltron. I'm like, I wish it was more like Voltron Legendary Defender, which, right, is, right. Uh-huh. which I think is it's 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 broader in terms of. Appeal. But anyway, Mason, uh, just quickly, uh, uh, with the screening I went to, I met a couple of cool dudes. One of them, Dave Lee, who has his own YouTube channel, which people should check out. Oh, yeah. Uh, he does a whole lot of... What did he pay you for that? He paid me so much money, Mason. $16,000 US. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all he had on him. But, uh, yeah. but I took it. <laughs> yeah, no, but this... People should definitely check check that out. <laughs> but no, he does great reviews and, and things like that. And I also met a couple of, a couple of uh, people who listen to the show, listeners to the show. Oh, terrific. Uh, Louis, and I think... It was Andrew, but I, at the time I'm like, I'm going to remember those two names, and now I'm yep. fairly certain that the second one isn't Andrew. So I'm sorry, Andrew. You missed out, Andrew. <laughs> your name's not your Andrew. Your name's Andrew now. Yeah. Uh, uh, Are you going to dispute the host of your favorite podcast? 
<laughs> but I, that was really nice to, to meet those yeah, two. It was, it was it was super cool. Uh, uh, I met uh, I met uh, Weekly Planet listener and uh, Little Dum Dum Cub listener Paul Squirter McWhirter. <laughs> I'm not familiar with Paul. <laughs> He's great. He's a great guy. <laughs> I need to listen to more Dum Dum. Yeah, it's a great show. All right, uh, Mason. I've done an Easter egg video. You can check it out. It's very extensive. Cool, man. It's crazy. But uh, we're going to do non-spoilers and spoilers. That being said, uh, if you don't want to know anything, I recommend do not listen to any of this. Yeah, correct. Yeah, for the rest of the show, because we'll probably just drop in a spoiler. Drop, drop, it in a, yeah. drop it in during the letters, during what we're reading. Yeah, that's it. But Mason, at, at, at the risk of you spinning this back on me, which you did last time for Rogue One. Oh, yeah. What do you think the story was? Oh, right. Hang on. See, this should be easy because... There's an opening crawl at the front of the movie that explains what happened previously. And it's I just, just because it picks up directly after Force Awakens. It's Force Awakens. Yeah, right. That's the story. Yeah, like from everything that goes on from there. Yeah, no so, Star Killer. The rebels are fleeing. The, yeah, the, they're not the rebels. You know what I mean. The resistance. They're the rebels. It's yeah, fine. they are. Well, they, I don't care if you can if you, people use those interchanges. No, I think it's that's fine. fine. But people will get letters. Mm. Uh, but and all anyway. So. Ray went to Luke Skywalker to get trained. Things are up in the air. The galaxy is in a state of tur- turmoil. Turmoil. Yep. Big time. Mm-hmm. I liked it quite a bit. What did Me you think? Me too. I liked it a lot. I see. I was hoping you'd hate it so we could yeah, kind back of and get forth. into it. But yeah. maybe we'll like and hate different things. Yeah, I, so that's, that's okay. very possible. Also, I've got some tweets here from people who didn't like it that we can kind of we can discuss. And I've also written some points in of them. Some are they super aggressive? Like. No, I, I put the the like the reasonable ones in. <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah. Mm. Okay, so. Did you think this, you, you, we were talking about this briefly before the show, you said a lot of the things that people might not like about this is that it doesn't necessarily answer the questions the way that you'd want those questions answered. Yes. Is this something we should touch on more in spoilers? I think we should touch on it more in spoilers, yeah. but I feel like prior to this, in between Force Awakens and now, I think it's it's been a solid year of... Two years. To, has it been? It's been two oh, years. Yeah, two years. Well, it's been a solid year. There was a, there was that, there was a yeah, year of definitely, nothing. Definitely, yeah, yeah. There was a, there's been two years of here's all the fan theories, and as the filmmakers, you must pick one of these for each of the yeah. outcome. You have to pick one outcome for each of these. Yep. And I think in a lot of cases they did not pick any of those. No. And a lot and, of the things that I thought uh, had had thought would happen didn't, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed that a lot Me because too. a lot of these things as Luke Skywalker says in the trailer they don't go the way that you'd think yeah, they're going to go right. and that happens multiple times throughout this do you movie. think do you think that was a fun do you think maybe they put that in to the trailer as a little a little uh, little preview of what's to come I think potentially yeah. I think it's just a good line to kind of throw yeah, into totally the trailer right. but it's also it was nice that but it'd be nice if Ryan Johnson would just be like I told you, didn't I? Yeah, it was in the trailer. Yeah, did well, you not pick up on that? They have been they have been saying that all along that this is a different Star Wars and whatever, and and a, and a darkest. I'm not really. I think people have said this is going to be like Empire, and people were expecting Empire Strikes Back. I think the yeah. other problem is, not this is not for everybody. You can't please everybody because the Force Awakens was a was a rehash of things that had come before, and this is vastly different in a lot of ways for a Star Wars film. Yep. Uh-huh. And there's people that don't like rehashes and there's people that don't like things that are different than what they know or yeah. the expectations of certain characters, Luke Skywalker, for example, that weren't met. Yeah. Uh, I've seen a lot of people say, this is not a Star Wars movie. What do you think about that? It seemed like it was a Star Wars Me? film. I it had the also... music. It had yeah. the Millennium Falcon. Mm. It had a Luke Skywalker. There were some lightsabers. A Chewbacca. A Chewbacca. Porgs were back. Porgs were what back. What else do you want? Exactly. <laughs> No, I thought it was, I definitely felt like a Star Wars film. I think also, and on the, in terms of Luke Skywalker, and I thought this, and then I somebody said it online, or maybe I read it first online, and then and then I thought that I thought it first. Yes. But basically, uh, the expectations of Luke Skywalker were that he was do, to do a certain thing, right? Yes. Which I was really happy with the way that went and the way that character goes, and we'll talk about it more in spoilers. But. Uh, imagine though, if you saw the prequel trilogy with Obi Wan Kenobi, and then you saw a New Hope, you'd be mm. like, "This is a horrible representation of the character of Obi Wan no- Kenobi." I love. Remember all the flips he used to do and all the adventures yeah, right. he went on. Exactly. And then he just stumbled his way onto a ship and then got cut down in one of the worst lightsaber fights in history. Mm. If you look at it chronologically, yes. But I think the expectations for Luke Skywalker were, were exceeded in terms of what that character did. Yeah. Because. Mm. You know what? We'll get we'll get a, we'll, we'll get into it. But yeah, I think and yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. Or it's subjective, Mason. You didn't want to 
why it is subjective, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. Well, performances in general. Mark Hamill's great in this, right? He should be in more things. He should absolutely. But could he? Could he be in more things and not be Luke Skywalker? That's a good question. Do you know what I mean? What? What? Because he's in Kingsman and he's kind of funny and quirky. But like, could you put him in as this kind of? This old grizzled action star is that the kind of actor? No, that I put he him is? in a Coen Brothers film. Right, yeah. yeah. As I don't know what. A man with a shotgun yeah. and a cowboy hat. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Cow- cowboy hat, shotgun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah no, definitely. He, he's clearly got the range yeah. and, and ability. And because over the years, even though he hasn't been in a lot of mainstream stuff, I mean, he's been some of it more so than others. You know, depending on what you think of animation and, and whatnot, mm-hmm. he clearly has been crafting his acting skills. Yeah, totally. You know, he hasn't just been. And I, I had a complaint. My complaint for Carrie Fisher was in the Force Awakens was I didn't think it was a great performance a lot of the time uh-huh. because she wasn't an actor anymore. She'd been writing for twenty years. That's you know? true. Yeah. She's a fantastic uh, writer, but in terms of her performance here, mm-hmm. I thought she was really great. And I, maybe that's a nostalgia thing in knowing now that she's gone. But right, I thought okay, she was yeah. really good. What mm-hmm. did you What did you think? I thought she was also good. Yeah, excellent. But I mean, in the ver- in the few scenes she was in, sure, this wasn't her movie. No, well, uh, the the story was well. She'd said that before she passed that the next movie was going to be Princess Leia's film. But we'll talk about how mm. they might handle that uh, next, or how they did handle it in this, and how that's going to carry yeah, right. over in the next one. What did you think of performances in general, though, Mason? What about your main characters? Your pin, your your pin, your Finn, your <laughs> Poe, your Ray. No, that's their that's their couple name. Pin, pin and Pin and Foe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Pretty good, I think. I think there were some. There were, there were a couple of uh, secondary characters that I maybe didn't. I wasn't entirely convinced of their 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 character, but uh, I think because you're already got to, you're already also got to deal with the old character, the existing characters, and the characters existing, the characters from Force Awakens, yeah, right. just, and then you're piling more characters on top, characters on top of that. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah, things suffer in terms of yeah, but I think all the performances in. were good. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. For me, it isn't a lot of it. Isn't about the, the performances yeah. so much. It's what the, about Adam Driver's Kylo Ren? Oh, he's good though, That's, isn't he? Yeah, he's amazing. He mm. really is. Yeah. 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 Mm. He's just good at acting. Good at acting. Yeah. Should is I- he handsome? We don't know. It's <laughs> no way of knowing. I think he is. It was, you should listen about Force Awakens commentary it's where mo- a lot of that is us going, but he's not handsome in this scene. Yeah. But now he's very handsome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no ugly. Don't like him. <laughs> it's how you light him. It's angles. I yeah, don't know maybe. What I don't is, know. But yeah. yeah. But he's very charismatic. That's true. And he's very believable. Mm. Yeah. And I liked him a lot. And he also does... He can play innocent and naive well as mm. well, and you see kind of a, a little bit of that. You know, who I don't kind of, who I do kind of love, but I kind of hate. But I, maybe I just hate the character Hux. Donald Gle- Apparently, it's pronounced like a donut, but Do- with an L. Oh, Donut like, Gleason. Yeah, Donut Gleason. <laughs> yeah. It's like Donald Logue, I guess. So it's okay. just Donald. Like Donut. Yeah, like Gleason. Donut. Donut Gleason. Okay, good. So anyway, you don't like Donut Gleason? No, no. But I, I think it's what I find because you're supposed to. I think I'm expecting him to be this Tarkin-esque character, yeah. but he's kind of an idiot. Well, see, that's the and thing. I think like that's I, also yeah. the point. Like I like that's the thing. Like I think I, I, that's I guess what I was trying to say earlier. I like his performance, but I think that character has been he's been rewritten. I think a little since the last one, and now he's comic relief to some extent. Yeah, yeah. Like people make fun of him and throw him about and yeah, and whatever. Yeah. And do we have anything like that in any of the previous movies? No, because Vader just kills most of them. That's true. Yeah, maybe yeah. if you live, you live long enough to see yourself become the comic relief in the Star Wars. Oh, universe. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, maybe that's how. But how it, it goes. Uh, yeah, I don't recall anybody like that in the previous movies. But and it, it, it as a character, it sort of it sort of makes me wonder how did he get to the position he's in. Yeah, that's that. I guess I, is an objection yeah. to that character. How did he get to the position he's in if he's this? If he's if he's cartoonishly dumb. His dad was probably the previous supreme leader. Yeah, maybe. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. People have also made the comparison between uh, these guys are more like the alt-right and, uh, and, oh, and, I see, and, right. the, and the Imperials were the Nazis. So it's like the next wave and right. they're kind of like you, you, you're kind of trying to present yourself in a way that's not coming across the way that you think it's coming across. Right, you just okay. look like a moron. So they're dangerous, but they're also dummies. Yeah. I get it. No, I, I understand. Maybe that's... I mean, I don't know whether that's intentional, but I can yeah. see how you can read it that way. How did you feel about the political allegories in this or the societal allegories? It, I thought it was... I think parts of it were handled well and parts yeah. of it were... I didn't quite buy. I thought parts of it were handled well, but I think it... 
a lot of it dragged, and I think a lot of yes. that could have been trimmed out. Uh, I think, a, yeah, I there's think, that whole. Se- I know exactly. Yeah. I think a lot of it could be could have been trimmed out using various means, various writing tricks, and I don't think anybody various would have editing techniques. Editing techniques. Yeah. I don't think anybody would have noticed. Yeah, are you talking about a particular storyline? I should. Yeah, the mid, yeah. sort of the middle act. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree because. Uh, the complaints of this film for me is there was a point probably, I don't know, because it's long as yeah. well. Uh-huh. It's an hour or so in and I'm like, where is this going? This needs to kick off. Yeah, right. And then there's a tipping point yeah. and you kind of, you know it when it happens. Yeah, right. And then it's just bananas. Yeah. yeah. I feel like Force Awakens had almost no No, that was just go, yeah. go. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a brief pause when we go to Maz yeah. Kanata's castle, yeah, and that's about it. Do you think that's what people maybe don't like about this? Is you can you have time during the film to stop and think about it? Maybe, yeah. Because I found myself thinking about the film as I was watching it until it kicked off again. Force Awakens, yeah, it doesn't take a breath. No, and is there breathing room in the like the original trilogy? I think, I think uh, probably more so, like Empire. Yeah. I would say, and probably Jedi a little bit, but probably not the first one in terms of a 1977 movie. It's pretty, yeah, yeah. it's pretty brisk. But there's a lot of downtime of like. They're in the they're in that they're hiding in the asteroid field. Luke's training. Yeah, so I think exactly. Right. So I think there is, mm. but this seems like there's a lot of that. Do you in think this. that? Do you think? Do you think there's a deliberate nod to those movies in this, or do you think it's just? I think there is in terms of splitting up the characters and maybe yeah that downtime in, in between. But this is not a rehash of Empire. No. In I mean there are elements. I mean it's Star Wars. So obviously there's certain things that you do. Yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. I I don't feel it was. It, it, a lot of it felt like Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Well, see, and I've said I, I've said this on all the podcasts I've been on prior to this. Mm. Uh, that I my assumption with this one is that it was just going to be like Empire, and it was going to be we're going to end on you know Empire Strikes Back style cliffhanger. Certain things are going to roll out exactly like Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. And then we're gonna then we're all gonna wait a year or two years or whatever it is. And then the, there'll be a thrilling conclusion. A thrilling conclusion. We're, but I but it, one I thought that this didn't roll out. I love the fact that it didn't roll out exactly the way we yeah. thought it was going to. And also I felt I feel like this movie also presented to some degree a complete movie, in that. I, if, I think this could. It feels like the end in a lot of yeah, ways. I yeah. think if they went, hey, you know what? We're actually not gonna. We're we're gonna. We've decided this is a good conclusion. We're not gonna end. We're not gonna do an episode nine. Yeah. On some level, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. I think this this finished it off in a satisfying way. And I feel like the the original Star Wars plays that way because yeah. even though because obviously there's still villains at the end of this film. Yeah. I mean that's not a spoiler. Who's to say which ones are left mm. and which ones aren't? But Darth Vader spins off into the into space. Yeah, I mean the Death Star's gone, Tarkin's gone, but the Empire still the Empire's still there. So I I agree, mm. and I think uh, we're well, not we're talking about spoilers. You you were you went on do go on and you talked about Star Wars. I did. I can't remember if you said or not. Was was the original Star Wars? Was it always intended that the original Star Wars had was going to have sequels? It was going to have. George or was Lucas, that something he said? We planned sequels and the way it kind of played out he wrote uh, there was a sequel book called Splinter of the Mind's Eye which we've talked about which yep. is going to be the low budget sequel he was going to make if he couldn't do Empire yeah right because there's no Harrison F- we've done a video on it you can yeah, check totally, it out yeah. uh, mm-hmm. in the Caravan of Garbage also a very special Caravan of Garbage coming this Tuesday Ooh. with a comic Ooh. Ben's sorting that out at the moment Eric Chen's doing some animation very it's nice gonna, kinda, it's come together real well uh, I don't think all the jokes land. oh let's talk about that yeah this movie was very quippy but also Empire is quippy not yeah. quippy Empire is funny this is more quippy, and it yeah. definitely doesn't always work. It doesn't always land. There are some elements in it. I think we might have to keep them to spoilers. Mm. But there's one. There's a. It, this basically starts with a with a gag. Yeah, it starts with a run. Goes like for a, a little too long. But also, I feel people were like, "Well, that's not Star Wars, is it?" This thing that happens. But I think it's very. I think an almost identical thing happens in the first Star Wars. The original, original. Yeah, yeah. New Hope. When Darth Vader's like, "What are you doing?" And she's like, "You suck." That no, bit, or no. was C three PO like we're doomed? No, the bit where they're in the in the brig. Where were they? They're in the I'm they're in the Force Awakens. No, I'm talking about A New Hope. We're in the holding cells, and Han's like, hey, "Everything's fine down here." Oh, I thought cool. you meant the opening was the same. The opening joke. Oh no, no, no! I meant like the the, the yes. The, okay, yeah. Sure. When he's like, you know, and people are like, oh, the humor isn't the same. But I feel like in the in the uh, New Hope when he's like. Everything, we just had a blast of malfunction. Everything's fine. Don't, everything's yeah, cool. Don't you worry. That's a good parallel, Mason. Like I think a lot of people, uh, and I think that in some instances they're right. I think people were like these are very modern day jokes. Mm. Like they're they're jokes from twenty seventeen. Yeah. Like that that 
modern people on earth would all think were funny. Yeah. But they wouldn't they don't really work in a context of a long time ago in a galaxy far, far right, away. Okay. Yeah. But there are some jokes that exist in context in the movies that I yes. think we might get to if I remember. Yeah. Which which do work, I think. Another thing I didn't particularly love was uh there was a very wonky looking puppet at one point, which uh oh, yeah. I can't mm-hmm. spoil. Uh huh. Sometimes good, sometimes not. Uh there was a there was a, a chase sequence in the section of the film I didn't love that re- felt very Prequely. Revenge of the Sith, attack, more Attack of the Clones, CGI running about, mm, yeah. which I did not care yeah. for. Also was kind of pointless. That, uh, that whole bit's very prequel yeah, for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I think also... That being said, a lot of people love the prequels. And if they were like, listen, this is a nod to all the people who yeah. love the who grew up on those movies and thought they were great, I well, guess. I, no, I like the... Guess. Look, it was it's the casino, all right? Yes, the, we, there's a, probably not there's so. a scene in a space casino. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't mind the setting. I just didn't think what they did with it was very interesting. Like, I like yeah. the opulence and the world building, but I also find it weird how there'll be a little CGI muck, like man running about and he's drunk and whatever, and then there's a very unconvincing puppet. Right. I don't think... I think in trying to do both, sometimes they, they don't mesh well together. Right. Like, your Maz Kanata's... And it, in the castle full of actual animatronics and puppets uh-huh. doesn't always not mesh. And then you've got like the crystal foxes, which are in the trailer, which I think were a mixture of animatronic and CGI. I think do do work. Yeah, I think so. But I think there's still some blending of old school techniques and new that are weird. And I think the Porgs look a lot like puppets a lot of the time. Right. And I'm completely indifferent. I didn't, I'm glad they were in it as little as they were. They yeah, I was also indifferent to the Porgs. Me, um, Whatever. Yeah, they weren't yeah. they weren't the new Jar Jar. Yeah. But they all and but yeah, they exactly. They were yeah. they weren't even really they for Ewoks. anything. They were yeah, just, they weren't Ewoks. They they're just to sell things or yeah, whatever, exactly. I assume, which is whatever. What about in terms of action sequences? Because it's it's pretty light in the middle. Yep. Uh but I overall really, really enjoy it. They are spectacular, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I do I think though, the best looking Star Wars film. Yes. Not the best Star Wars film, okay. definitely, but Rogue One is the best looking Star Wars film. In terms of getting the, the period era. Getting the period right, making, yeah, just, it feels, I don't know, I, I feel like this was more kind of, the, the like the X-Wings feel more CGI and in Rogue right. One somehow they feel like models but not, and I don't uh-huh. know whether it's just because of the design of that particular era that those film, that film set in, uh-huh. but I feel there's a, there's a kind of a weight to those that you don't get. All the time in, like, say, Force Awakens and, and Was this. Rogue One a lot cheaper than the other ones? I don't think so. Okay, I think it was right. expensive in terms of trying to make it look like... Yeah, right. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. I'm not saying this looks bad. It looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crate in particular mm-hmm. is great. No, oh, If you don't mind yes. me saying so. I get it. But I don't think you can beat that, like, especially that third act of Rogue right. One in terms of how it looks and the sheer scale of it mm. uh, is incredible. Yeah, yeah, right. Should we do some uh, spoilers? Because we can't really talk action sequences because a lot of the play into... The characters, which, yeah. is, which is really good. Isn't it? Yeah, so yes. can we go spoilers? Let's go spoilers. I'm going to say best movie ever. I'm also going to say best movie ever. And you know what? If you think it's the worst movie ever, I understand that. Yeah, I get where I, you're going I with that. I totally get it yeah. too, yeah. See, I saw it a second time because there were things about it that I didn't like, but I came out of it really enjoying it. So I, yeah. but I thought, am I riding high on this? So I went back in. Yeah. And even the bits where it dragged, it didn't drag as much because I kind of knew where it was Yeah, going. right, right. I went, I'm not saying I enjoyed it more the second time, but I came out going, oh, no, I really like this. I think yeah. this is great. I've heard people say, oh, this is Phantom Menace syndrome where we're all thinking, we're all going to say it's five stars and then in a, week, in a couple too- of years like we're going to be like, no, actually it was terrible. We're such idiots. So. But I thought Phantom Menace was terrible at the time. You so. did, yeah. And also I... Also, there wasn't the immediate backlash. for. I think backlash is getting... Closer and closer yeah. to the film's release. Yeah, right. Because Force Awakens took a few weeks. Rogue One was a little, little bit less. And this was instant. Instant, yeah. Uh, nobody hates Star Wars like Star Wars fans. fans that's are. absolutely true. <laughs> yeah. But I think, but but also I think the the backlash here is instant because people have this visceral reaction to... Yes. Anyway, let's get into spoilers. Yeah. Uh, where does it rank for you? How about that? Oh, uh, a lot of people are putting it right down the bottom. I like it a lot. I'm going to put it... Uh, gosh. It's my favorite of the new ones, definitely. For me, Rogue One is fine. I like yep. a lot of Force Awakens, but this is yeah, okay. I think yeah. it's I think it's also superior to Force Awakens. Yeah, but uh, obviously it can't exist without Force Awakens. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, and the, the Force Awakens is a great technical yeah. achievement for the, many, the reasons we mentioned multiple times. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 
remember, mate. And also, bearing in mind, you can change your opinion at any point. That's true, I can, yeah. I might even change it next week. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Or as soon as we finish recording this, it's fine. People out there, you can like it now and not like it later. It's actually fine to do that. Yeah, that's right. That's what what, what people don't seem to be able to get is you can go... Like, in a number of years' time, I might watch Batman v Superman again and be like... Oh yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah, right. I won't. But you might. I might though, but and it's won't. fine. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I, mm. I think, I don't know, because I'm I, okay to go in five years. Go. Oh yeah, I thought Last Jedi was great at the time, but now I think it's good or worse or better. Yeah. Or, and I guess it also depends what's come next, and yeah, and mm-hmm. like maybe the next one will be even better, and it makes this one look like shit. You yeah, know exactly. What I mean? mm-hmm. Which I don't know. Has that ever happened in a movie? It's made the previous one look really bad. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. Opinions opinions can change. And that's yeah. why I don't like review scores is because if you say, if you give something a 10 out of 10 mm-hmm. and then you give a different thing, say you give Iron Man a 10 out of 10, Ed, but you also give, I don't know, Train Spotting a 10 out of 10. Yeah, right. They're not the same, no. obviously. Mm. Like you won't enjoy one the, the way that you enjoy the I other. I mean, they're both films about sad drug addicts, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> Mm, yeah, yeah. Dr- sad drug addicts who should get what's coming to them. That's right. They're both <laughs> they're both about sad men who cocoon themselves in a in a, in a bloody robot suit. Correct. You know, like yeah. train spotting. Yeah. All right. Anyway, spoilers. and they climb into a toilet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay, spoilers. What do you want to talk about first? Ah, uh, let's talk about. Oh, uh, okay. So what I'm saying is, from the start, there's the scene where yeah, uh, bloody Poe Dameron's like. Hey, I can't hear you. What's what's going on? It's, and he's and he's making fun of Hux. Yeah, and I think a lot of people were like, I think grew hot sideburns in between films. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, and I think a lot of people were like, uh, you know, that well, that's a bit modern. That's a bit that's that's not Star Wars. Star Wars isn't funny in that way. Right. But again, I think it is. There, there's that scene in A New Hope. I think it went. I I agree, but I think it went to the bit where it's like your mother, bloody this and that. Right, okay. That's why yeah. I was like, you, you probably pushed this a little too far. Right, like, this okay. could have been a shorter joke. Sure. I think the way that it opens The Force Awakens, where he does that little joke that you talk first or I talk first. Yeah, right. I right. think that's enough. Sure, and yeah. I think he did enough of those kind of moments before. Yeah, yeah. But I think he just pushed it a little too far. Do you think he's going to open episode nine with a joke? Maybe that's going to be the new thing. Maybe it's going to be the new thing. Speaking of the new thing, I think a lot of people are upset because they're, the characters they loved are being sidelined. Right, they lost Han in the previous yes. one, and in this one we're losing Luke. But is any of anyone really gone? Are they ever gone? No, because well, first of all, he's going to be a Force ghost, obviously. <laughs> so he's not gone, and obviously we're going to have to lose Leia at some point. Yes. But I mean, what are they going to do? We're going to have another trilogy where they're back again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some, like, what I liked about this movie is that first of all, there was an there was a an ad, we were we all had to admit that not everybody in this universe is special. But also that there are other people in this universe other than the heroes from the original trilogy. There's more people than Han and Leia and Luke. There's other people who can step up and be heroes. And that's the conclusion that even Luke Skywalker Skywalker himself reaches at the end. Yeah. Spoiler alert. You've seen this. We're in spoilers. We're still in spoilers, guys. I think he could have lived, but also when he died, I was like, that sucks to see him go. Yeah. But I thought it was a really fitting conclusion to that What do you think people wanted from that character? Well, I think because when it turned out that his big action sequence was kind of a fake out, people were upset, but I thought it was a really clever way around the limitations of what that character had become. Yep. Because to to go right back to the start, when Ray finds him, it it becomes very quickly apparent that he's not who he used to was who he used to be he hates himself he doesn't want to train anybody he yeah. just wants to he's gone to this island to die when they have a fight physically he's not even he's not a match for ray and even yeah, though right. he has kind of he had shut himself off from the force i think if he really went to face kylo ren he'd be dead in a second yes so i think what it did he he even says look i'm not luke skywalker i'm not the guy who's going to stand in front of the empire and, and tear everybody down he ends up doing that yes but in a way that he's actually capable of and through the force and i like the fact that he didn't that a we we saw a new power of the, the, yeah. the force can do also that's in rebel so it's not it's not oh, right, a new okay. thing yeah, in cool. terms of that but. so okay but also like that yeah like we we it, it was a creative way to do it and I don't know, I've lost my train of thought. But, you know, yeah. Well, for me it was, and maybe you're going to say this, maybe you weren't Mason. Oh, yeah. 
he couldn't be at the way they wrote the character, and maybe you could write it, write it so he was this. He couldn't be the Luke Skywalker of legends that everybody thought he was, and that he yeah. thought, and that he thought he was. But in his last moment and sacrifice, he was able to be the Luke Skywalker from legend yes. one last time. Right, he got right. one last kind of showdown, yeah. and that's going to be this moment that everybody in the galaxy remembers the time that fucking Luke Skywalker stood up to Kylo Ren and a, and the fleet of First Order ships mm. and. And in a sense, you know, one. Yeah, and right. that's what, And so that character is going to be remembered as a legend. He got to have that final Luke Skywalker heroic moment, but not in the way that you, you, he's going to do a CGI flip like Count Dooku. See, exactly. Or that's it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if he'd sh- if he'd shown up, like, and we we got him, you know, the illusion that he had these, you know, that he had these fighting skills, and he's like dipping under the <laughs> the lightsaber and things like that. Yeah. But the if if we if he'd given if been given like a Yoda style, it, I, I don't think that would work for the character at all. If he is doing flips and yeah, like that, and obviously that isn't. I mean, he does a little spin. He does a little <laughs> spin, but the idea, like, Im, imagine him doing, you know, leaping up to a high platform or doing anything that any of the characters do in the prequels. Yeah, that'd be embarrassing. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it works in the prequels, and I don't think it would work now. It also doesn't work for Luke Skywalker. Yeah, because he was never like that. Yeah, right. I mean, I, even though he was a great and powerful Jedi, yeah. I don't really think he was. Yeah, like, right. I, I mean, if you look at him and Anakin. Yeah. There's a big difference in abilities That's true, there. yeah. And maybe that was because he wasn't trained as from such a young age. Yeah, yeah. But I think the strength of Luke Skywalker, Skywalker was in the resolve and yeah. the choices that he made, not yeah. how many flips he could do. Exactly, and I, was, that's, that's, I think that's what I was going to say. The, I, what I liked about the, this final scene was that he did display like this vast power, yeah. but it wasn't, here's the vast power of me, you know, doing martial arts carters by myself and swinging a sword for the last 30 years. Yeah. It was me just becoming one with the universe in whatever way that was and and now I can Whatever happened. Now I can exactly, <laughs> now I can transfer my mind across the universe. I thought that yeah, was really interesting. Absolutely. I just I loved that we he got and even as a as a form of redemption for the character, he got one more chance to be Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That that he that he remembers himself being and what the audience remembers him yeah. him being. I also like that his his mind has a certain vanity to it <laughs> yes. in the sense that when he projects himself across the galaxy, he's Luke Skywalker from a decade ago, yeah. probably. See, was that the first? Did you did you twig that? That was see, my first that's thought. The thing. I'm like, I should have twigged, but right. I didn't. I, I thought. I was like, his beard's darker. He's had yeah. a haircut. Yeah, right. Did he stop for a haircut? He stopped for a haircut. And even... He stopped for a haircut Springfield monorail style. <laughs> exactly. But the thing is, I was so kind of wrapped up. And yeah. maybe uh, this sounds like a real, like, a oh, fanboyed out or whatever. But I was so wrapped up in the fact that he'd come back and he throws a wink to C-3PO and he says goodbye to Leia. And he yeah. just waltzes out. I was yeah, so right. wrapped up in the in like, in like all that that I didn't catch it. And yeah. I think... And I should have caught it because it's right. so obvious. Because also, the light as soon as it was over, I'm like, they didn't touch lightsabers. His feet didn't make a scuff in the ground. Yeah, right. I'm like it's so fucking obvious. Yeah. But I'm such a dummy that I that I missed it. I initially thought that he was gonna because he when he arrived, what's the planet called? Crate. Crate. I thought initially he was gonna appear in his X-wing. Mm. Which, in retrospect, and we see the X wing. So. We see the X wing, and I'm like, well, maybe that's his his chance to be Red Five again. Yeah, like, right. That, well, that, I think that would have worked as well. But I think you need something lightsaber related. Yeah, totally. Also, yeah. the lightsaber was destroyed. Like there were so many things that happened that I should have seen it, and I only saw it after he got swiped through the middle. I'm like. I'm an idiot. I should yeah, right. say this. Uh-huh. Yeah. But that was great. I thought that was such a completely agree. Uh, and again, like the the idea that by you know, the the third act kicks off and I'm like, I don't know where this is gonna go. I don't know who's gonna live. Yeah. I don't know. I thought who's... Finn was gonna die. Yeah, right. Yeah. There was that absolutely like there was the the when he's making the death. And I would have been the... okay with it with it if he did. Yeah. I mean it would have been pointless anyway. But, <laughs> right. But yeah, but I mm. it, it it really felt like he was gonna and die. And that that really again, even though this feels like a satisfying conclusion now in this next one, I'm like who who will live and die in yeah. this? I don't even know. Maybe we'll talk about the future towards yeah. towards the end. Mm. I think okay. I know a lot of people have had problems, and th- this I and I understand. Yes. it's that the one scene in particular where Holdo, who's played by Laura Dern, who by the way is great. Yeah, right. I mm-hmm. really came around on that character. She's Leia gets in an accident, which we'll talk about. Uh, so she's out of commission. So yeah. the 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 fleet is taken over by 
Holdo, Laura Dern, Holdo, Holdo, good old Holdo, and and Poe Dameron is led to believe that she's just running them out of fuel until she's they're just all a ticker die. tape bureaucrat yeah. who's just bloody pushing some pencils until they die. But she had a plan to evacuate to Crate, which Finn and Rose really screw up, which we'll talk about in a minute. Yeah, right. And people are saying uh, that he sh- she should have told Poe yes. Dameron. And what do you think? Yes, right. but I also understand why she didn't because he got a lot of people killed at the start of oh, the Oh, yeah, film. for sure, yeah. And I think she saw him as the way that Leia saw him a lot of time. And they've actually been doing this in the Poe Dameron comic where he's too hot-headed. He's not a leader. He's just a pilot. Yeah, right. And also maybe there's a spy on board. Yeah, There's any right. number of things that, that, could, have, that could have happened. And oh, yeah, I, great, I understand yeah. why. I mean, yeah, it would have solved... A lot of things wouldn't have happened, but I also think this movie was about failure. Yeah. And, and Yoda even says that to Luke when he comes back. Weird looking puppet. We'll talk about that. <laughs> right, right, right. But he says, you know, the lesson you didn't learn is failure is okay. And I think that's such I didn't a, think that look, it looked that weird, but all right. I, th- I thought it looked real weird yeah. sometimes. But I think that's such an important lesson, not just in Star Wars, but in, in life. Mm. That it's okay to fail to make failures because you, you learn from that. Yeah. And I think I mean all the all the bomber pilots didn't learn from that. <laughs> no, they exactly. they dead. No, exactly. But and I so think I do have a problem with yeah, yeah. I think you're right in the sense that like and I think that first action sequence was designed to show that in some way he gets results, but one or two more skirmishes like that and everybody is dead. Yeah. And to to go actually, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to make it over here. He'd be like, all right, well, I'll let's take the whole fleet out and let's <laughs> let's get out there and I'll hold them off, and then yeah. they would all die or whatever. Yeah. So that's exactly it. So I understand, like mm. she sh- she should have told him obviously, yeah. but I understand why she didn't. And also, there's that's the implication that everybody in this universe is perfect. Like, why exactly, does she why does yeah. she necessarily have to have the perfect? In a lot of people, I think they're like, okay, well, you have this, this, you get yourself an admiral character. They are either going to be noble and perfect in every way, every way, mm. or they're going to be a, like a cowardly traitor. Yeah. Like there's, there's, it's just the binary, and there's no way in the middle. Yeah. But I like the idea that she is a noble. She wants, she wants to, she is a, a noble servant of the rebellion. She wants this to happen, but also she doesn't. She doesn't always make the right decision all the time. Yeah, exactly. It's okay, yeah. you know? Yeah, I mean, she did this time. Yeah. Yeah. But I also thought, and Claire talked about this after the, the film, you got the sense of friendship between her and, and Leia. Yeah. And you don't really get that in a film in terms of like two kind of older female characters. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a, it's like a lot of young, young hot shots or Do whatever. Do you think they were a, think a, they were couple. a couple? I don't think they were a couple. Oh, okay, they knew right. each other as kids or whatever oh, okay, or something. Right, right. But okay. yeah. I know. I, I really got the sense when they were saying goodbye, even though I'm like, I've never seen this character before, and I didn't like her for yeah, a lot right. of this film up until the reveal. Yeah, I really got a sense of that they did know each other, and yeah. this was a really good sacrifice. Okay, now let's talk about things flying through space. Sure. Speaking of Leia and Holdo, Ugh, Leia. Yeah. Okay, Le- Leia flying through space. What do you think about that? I think in principle it makes sense. Yep. In execution. One of the dumbest things I've ever seen. Sure, right. <laughs> I think, imagine if it was, she was unconscious and she slowly willed herself back. Not like this Mary Poppins fly through the air. I mean, just like a slow, yeah, like the way right. the X-Wing drifted out of the swamp. Do yeah. that. Or even like, yeah, like have like you could have the debris. I think if you just had the debris floating around and like some of it's going off into space and some of it's going this way and you just have her float and it looks like she's, Drifting off off into space, and then you change the angle, and then she goes through the the door, and it closes. Yeah, and you see maybe her hand that she's doing it, or whatever. Well, not even that. That just. But then would people be like, "Was it Luke or whatever?" I think you'd have to indicate that it was her. Right. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's just. Me. I, don't know, I don't even know if you have to do that. Okay. But don't do it. I've changed yeah. my mind. Great. Good stuff. I haven't. I'm with so, me. but the but obviously the the implication is she, like her brother, is force sensitive yeah. to some degree. Maybe she's had some training in intervening 30 years. Maybe she hasn't. Maybe she's just spent some time meditating. Yeah, I mean, right. clearly they've gone different ways. Yeah. Like, uh, and even they've said, they've said that in the, the Force Awakens where they kind of fell back on the things they were good at. Han went to smuggling. Luke did Jedi stuff in exile. She set up the New Republic. Mm. So she didn't train. But you can have the Force and not be a Jedi. Yes, exactly. So I was fine with the powers. I just thought it looked It really was a very odd execution, weird. wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Or even just, 
even just like an like she's she's floating and it looks like she's gonna miss the door. Yeah. Like it like the explosion just sent her in this direction. It looks like she's gonna yeah. miss the door. And then she like it, she just nudges and then she goes through. I think I think that would be Maybe she springs off Akbar's corpse. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say my my, my one note, because I after after the the the, sh- the what watching it, I had to I thought about making some notes for the Steel Wars podcast, and my one note just says in all caps, Akbar, and then a sad emoji. Because <laughs> they just knocked him off. Yeah, but he's dead, the, the voice actor. Ah, that's yeah. true, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, this anybody could go. I mean, I, I love Admiral Akbar, the, my first ever Star Wars action figure. That's how yep. I got introduced to, to Star Wars was through Admiral Akbar, but yeah. it was his time, man. That's right. What are you going to do? Yep. Akbar's again, not Akbar. Again, again, further, uh, one more shout out to Akbar's ads, which is on YouTube, which is a series of... <laughs> Ads by uh, a, a guy called Asterios who who makes just who got a hold of a Akbar mask and just makes bizarre ads with it. <laughs> it's from a few years ago. They're all great. Good, good, good. Yeah. What I thought was, uh, I'm talking about failures. Yes. Uh, Finn and Rose got so many people from the the rebellion, from the resistance, whatever you want to call it, fleet killed. Yes. By going on this ridiculous mission. Yes. Mm-hmm. That in in essence did nothing but harm. Sure, right. And I go, this is again about failure. But that story for me was too long to not really have the kind of payoff that they probably thought it was it was going to. Yeah, have. right. Mm-hmm. Did you feel the same way? Yeah, and then the whole thing, and it was a... I don't even... I like those characters, but mm. I didn't really care about that adventure. Yeah, all. right. Did you think, what about the where they were in love or whatever? What was- uh, look, I think props to them for having a diverse love situation. Yep. But I also think that they didn't... I thought it it was a weirdly non-committal romance. Okay. Because when you when I think of like somebody, there's a romance in a Star Wars movie. The music swells, and then they, there's some sort of danger, and then they just they, it's really dramatic, and they like sometimes it's done really well, and the other time they did it, it's done really poorly. Yep, yeah, precisely. <laughs> but in this, I thought I think they were like, look, we can't like. There's always a lot of passion to it. I think. Yeah. And I think in this, it was just kind of like, it was odd. Perfunctory. It was a little perfunctory. Maybe if they didn't do the kiss. Yeah, maybe. It was just like you know, you you gotta you gotta yeah. hold on to things you love, and then they hold up do it for the next film. But I think maybe it's an issue of like they went. I think maybe because a lot a lot of the, an assumption has been that it was there's that Poe and Finn were gonna get together. There's always been that. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I think they were like, world's not ready for that. <laughs> Let's do like a like a multiracial romance. Right. But yeah. then they're like, but if we really go for it, people are still gonna be upset. So I think they just went. This is this is what we're going to give you. Okay, right. Yeah. Which, and again, I think that I think this this movie was great for the 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 diversity of like races and, even, and gender and even body shapes. The and Imperials all that have Asians now. Great. You notice that? Yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah, nice. No aliens, but you know. No, well, <laughs> baby steps. Yeah. Mm. What else are we going to talk about in this? Yeah, I just thought. Okay, so for, on the Finn and Rose thing, they go to this casino plan. I oh, liked yeah. DJ as a character that that. I liked Justin Thoreau was in it really briefly. Was he? Oh yeah, he was the the other gambler. Oh, was I see, right. Uh-huh. But I, I I liked DJ's take on it where he was kind of you know when he escapes when yes. DJ leaves and he's like is that the character's name? DJ, yeah. You probably had another name, but it's DJ, yeah. Wait, who's DJ again? It's the the slicer guy. The the guy the. The, the Benicio del Toro, the, yeah, the Lando guy okay, who doesn't right. come good. Right. Okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Totally. Right. But well, here's my question: What would have happened if they hadn't parked their ship illegally on the beach? Maybe it would they, have been fine. And they would have just found the regular guy. Yeah. And been like, "Hey, can you crack this?" And he would have been like, "Sure thing." And then it would have been all. But maybe they still would have got caught on the other end. Or maybe whatever. that's true. But I also thought when they and they didn't get a slicer then they get in a weird horse race which i did not care for no, me neither and then they go back to their ship and it gets blown up were they just going to leave what was their plan from there go yeah. back to the fleet and go we didn't i guess so yeah do anything yep. that that's how missions go ridiculous. sometimes yeah i don't know i just thought that was ridiculous yeah. i mean and then they're like we really we we really got those those rich those rich bloody uh you know arms dealers or whatever did you yeah right they don't own the casino they're just at the casino yeah exactly <laughs> they yeah don't give a shit exactly and there was a bit about oh you know they've sold weapons to both sides like, it was a bit heavy handed I don't know yeah I th- I, that bit I didn't mind I, uh-huh. I liked the DJ <laughs> Benicio del Toro it was all about Demi La- I was sitting next to Demi Lardner oh, at the yeah. screening and she leaned into me and she was like serious question. Is that Brad Pitt? 
<laughs> and she was so convincing that I'm like, maybe it was Brad Pitt. <laughs> Is that Brad Pitt? I don't know. But uh, yeah, look, I like the fact that we didn't know which way he was going to go for a yeah. lot of it, and he flipped back and forth. Is he going to be a character in the next one then? I'd say potentially, yeah. Okay. I thought he was going to Lando it. Yeah, right. I thought he was going to be in that ATST. Yeah, but right. It was BB-8. BB-8, yeah. yeah. Uh, who else can we talk about then? BB-8, uh, Captain Phasma. Let's talk about Captain <laughs> Phasma. She's back as Ma. I, I thought it was fine. I yeah, don't know right. why people were expecting so much from this character when they gave so little in the last yeah, one. Yeah, right, yeah. I mean, she got a fight scene and then she fell into fire. I'm okay with that. It's not the dumbest way a character in cool armor has gone out in the That's Star true, Wars yeah. film. Mm-hmm. She's not a major player. She could still probably come back if they really wanted to. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Here's a theory. Uh, Captain Phasma, just ahead. <laughs> so if they want to, they just like, because her, her armor is. Do they have just ahead technology? Maybe. Maybe she could come back and she's just got a scar where the hole in the mask is. Yeah, maybe. It's all burnt. She's got really bad sunburn over that one eye that yeah. you can see. It's like Bowie makeup but or like, something. But I like, I like the idea that. Her body's gone beyond repair. They just plug it on. They just plug her head onto another body. Onto a spider. Yeah, <laughs> it's a spider. Exactly. Yeah. Do you think she'll be back? Uh look, she fell into a big pit of fire. Yeah, and maybe out into space. I'm gonna say no. She won't be yeah, back. I don't think so either. Yeah. I think you could. Yeah. It's like a Boba Fett Sarlacc thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a good chance that she could come back, but I'm sad because I'm I very much enjoy uh, the the red carpet photos of Gwendolyn Christie and. Poe Dameron, yes. like together, because he's like, like my two. height and she's like 6'4 or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's fun. Absolutely. Okay, uh, you know what I really liked? What's that? I really liked what they didn't do with Snoke, or did do, and yeah. then ended really quickly. Yeah, yeah. They go in, they march her into the throne room. He just reels off the Emperor's greatest hits of, yeah, right. of cliche evil villain lines. I thought he looked way better. Yep. The, the gold robe was dumb, but I think it was kind <laughs> of like, look at the opulence of this idiot. Sure, like that's yeah. the way I took it. Uh-huh. Uh, and he's just kind of like, you'll never do this and I'm this and I'm one step ahead or whatever. And then they just cut him in half. Yeah. And I loved it. Me too. I, I, that was the tipping point for me. And when yep. you see his body slide off and she catches the lightsaber yeah. and then they're back to back. Yep. Incredible. I agree. Probably yeah. the best moment in the film. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Luke Skywalker stuff was pretty good, but yeah. I really enjoyed that. Did you like it when Luke Skywalker dusted off his shoulder? I, that was very cool. It was good, yeah. That was nice. <laughs> uh, there was no dust there, though. That's true. No, that, he wasn't really there. They didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Also, because me not knowing, me not twigging that it wasn't really him, yep. I just thought, oh, he's could probably got a shield power. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so I didn't really... Well, that's the thing. That's how they get you. Were you, did, were you like, oh, he's a hologram man? Uh, what? Y- yes, because I'm like, he's... he's because I'm like, how did his beard get darker? Like, it got trimmed down mm. and it was dark. I'm like, well, there's something up here. Yeah. So, so I just thought, because I'm an idiot, that, oh, he trimmed it. Maybe it's not as grey underneath. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, sure. Ridiculous. Sure. Uh-huh. Rejuvenating. Reju- yeah. He probably yeah. possibly had some kind of, yeah. But no, I, yeah. No, it looks anyway, like Anyway, uh, <laughs> throne room scene. Great yeah, stuff. Yeah. Really uh, good. It's super solid. Yeah. And, and I think that was the. That was the anything can happen moment. That was the anything can happen moment, and that's also the action sequence where I'm like, well, you can't really top this with a Luke Skywalker action yes. sequence because he's never fought like this. No. And again, it'd be very and bizarre to see can't. him. Yeah. yeah, it'd be very bizarre to see him fight like that. So. Yeah, exactly. Because they fight like people in this new film fight people who haven't really been like Luke Skywalker was trained with like the kendo two hand kind of, yep. mm-hmm. and they're just kind it's of more like fencing. Yeah, it's more like fencing, and they're kind of just more you know kind of wailing about and, and they're and but they're stronger and they're faster and they're also yeah. keyed into the force in some way yeah in, in ways yeah. that the previous generation wasn't necessarily but it's no like kids and their snapchats you exactly. know what I exactly mean? did mm. you think it was kylo ren was going to flip back again at at the end because i thought oh is he a good guy now and then i liked the reveal of no he did this because he just wants to be in charge of everything yeah i don't know where i was gonna go that's yeah. that's why i liked it yeah, but you did you like that reveal though? Yeah, like, yeah. If he's, yeah it was he's still a, I, I I am concerned. We'll talk about this the next film next yeah. in a bit. Ray's parents. Yep. Ryan Johnson has said that it's definitive. In like Kylo Ren wasn't lying. That's the information that he has. Yep. That her parents were just junkers and drunks or whatever. Uh-huh. But I think they have left the door open to it be someone else's. Like, oh Obi-Wan. no! I don't think they should. Yep. I mean, there's a way to make that work, but I'm. 
a hundred percent okay with being like Snoke doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. Where Ray's from doesn't matter. Yeah. I think that's great because I think a problem with force awakens was the whole thing was built around a mystery box and yep. star Wars, except for that empire St- strikes back twist, which people weren't looking for has never been about mysteries. Yes. And when you build a franchise around people wanting to know the answers to questions, you're never going to get the result that you want, which is evident from the backlash to the way some of these things played out. Yeah, right. I don't think Star Wars should be about whose parents are who and who's what and who's yeah. from where. I don't think it should be about mystery. It should be about characters and amazing action set pieces and music and throwing rocks yeah. and boards. I also think that they handled the reveal very well mm. in the sense that he was like, you know who they are, nobody. Yeah. right. He wasn't, you know who they were, Obi Wan Kenobi, like <laughs> imagine if he said that. And uh, yeah, exactly in in that exact line, and they both looked at the camera. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a very real. Possi- and then he appeared as a Force ghost, and then it's me. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a very. It was you and McGregor <laughs> and Alec Guinness. They appear as separate. Oh, that was going to be in the cave sequence. They're both yeah. there, and they re and because they're her parents, <laughs> and then they reenact her conception as Force ghosts. <laughs> that's what's ha- that's what happens there. That's what. Uh, don't bring back Tarkin. Bring back Alec Guinness in yes. a sex scene with you and McGregor. Thank you. Finally. Yeah. Uh where else? Yeah, uh, and in the in the original trilogy. Ultimately, nobody cared who the Emperor was. He was just the guy in no. charge. He was the bad guy in charge. But I think the problem is, yep. and I can see why people are upset, is because they made this mystery box of who is this guy. Yeah. And if and I genuinely think that the reveal of Ray's parents and what was going to happen to Snoke. I mean, who is he even? I don't I don't even care. Yeah, right. I think they left it open to play with it. I don't think they really knew. Yeah, I, right. I genuinely, exactly. Maybe they filmed even multiple versions of this where he was Obi Wan Kenobi. Kenobi. <laughs> maybe they did. Yeah, but I think that's a mistake to set up these mysteries. Yeah, it's a stupid idea. Right, right, right. And I'm glad they just got rid of them. Mm, same. Yeah. Ah, uh-huh, so good. Yeah. And I love it because it upsets so many <laughs> I know. People. That's also what I enjoy about it. Yeah. I mean, who really? I mean, Snoke. I didn't give a shit about Snoke in the previous film, aside from who is this guy? So cut him in half. I don't give a shit. Yeah, right. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, he could be Darth Plagueis. He could be from another galaxy. Some people have theorized that we're, we're doing it again. Some people, apparently there are four sages in the distant past of the Star yes, Wars universe. And he's got and he's, the ring. He's that, one of those, yeah. right? So, Fine. There's yeah. also that mural in Luke Skywalker's meditation room. And it looks like Snoke and it's black and white. You don't really get a good look at it. So people are like, is he the first Jedi or whatever? Uh We'll we'll probably get an answer at some point, but ultimately, who cares? Right, exactly. Yeah. And again, it's going to upset all the... It's going to make the people who had that theory happy and it's going to make everyone else upset that they didn't nail it. I mean, I thought Ray was Kenobi. I thought Snoke was Plagueis or whatever. I don't give a shit. (laughs) I'm glad I was surprised. Yeah, me too. Mm. Ultimately. Uh. Mm. All right. What else? Uh, look, lanyard related. Yes. Uh, obviously, my theory that <laughs> Luke's initial meeting with Ray was going to result in him pushing Ray off the cliff, and then the some of her training was going to be getting, you know, back from the top of the cliff, which I think it came pretty close. Did you think it was going to happen? No, right yes. After what had happened? Yes. What What if she dived off after the lightsaber and had to come back? Would you have said that's a win for you? No. Okay. No. You're the an fact, honorable man. Yeah, exactly. But I think the fact that he just chucked the lightsaber over, over his shoulder, I thought that was... You know what? People were also upset because he... Why would he treat it like that or whatever? Because he hates all this shit. Yeah. Because it ruined his life. Ultimately. Exactly, yeah. yeah. He was having a fun time on a moisture farm drinking blue milk. Yeah. Now he's got to drink green milk out of a, out of a, <laughs> out of a weird, weird alien weird boob. <laughs> Yeah. That was so weird. Yeah. That whole sequence. Some of that was sequence so was off. That sequence was quite prequely, I yeah. felt. Yeah. That. What was that? I mean, I also kind of like it because it was so weird. Yeah. I'm like, what a weird thing to include. But I think it was just to be like, oh, he's crazy and alone. Yeah. And this and is just him day to day. And I also like, yeah, and also the idea that you can't rely on him for anything here. Yeah. Like, mm, why are you wasting your time? I like how he's just drinking the milk like, what? Yeah, right. This is what I do every day. Yeah, exactly, what do you yeah. want from me? But yeah. I think people are also upset that okay, I had a thing in my head and I've forgotten what it was. Uh-huh. But no, I, I read an article and I'm really annoyed that I read it because I was really good at avoiding spoilers. Oh, this was this. just before you watched this it. This is just before I watched it. It was a, oh, I can't remember what website it was, but it was like, this is what Luke Skywalker thinks when Ray hands him the lightsaber. And I'm like, oh, it'll just be like an internal monologue from the book where he's like, oh my God. It's, oh, so it's you whatever. didn't think it was a joke thing? You no. Was and then it was like, yeah, he throws it over his head. And I'm like, 
Why the fuck? That's not what he yeah. thinks. That's what he. That's what happens. Yeah. Time for me to throw this over my shoulder. <laughs> so then I was like, I'm an idiot. I shouldn't have clicked on it. It's my own fault. Right. But yeah. I was. Yeah. That's uh, not what I thought. What else happens in that bit? Uh. Oh yeah. The, but also, uh, he he throws it over the shoulder, and I'm like, Oh well, he hasn't he hasn't agreed to train her yet. There's still hope, a new hope, if you will. Oh yeah, like the that, film that he is going to push her off the cliff at some point. <laughs> and then I, and, and and he's like, I'm not going to train you. I'm not going to train you. And then he's like, Okay, now I will. And look down there, and I'm like, oh, here we go. This is still going to count. And then he did. No, what did we we establish that it had to be in the opening mm, sequence? All right. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, okay. This oh, that's what I was going to say about Luke Skywalker. Another thing people said was. I can't believe he was going to kill Kylo Ren. Why would Luke Skywalker or Ben Solo? Why would he do that? That's not within his character. Yep. It's absolutely. First of all, he didn't. But it's well, exactly, absolutely yeah. in his nature to stand over a guy who's going to tear down everything that he's done. Who, for what, for what, as far as he knows, is could very well become the next Darth Vader and ruin the galaxy. Yeah. So of course he's going to consider shutting that down. Yeah, yeah. Again, he doesn't. Yeah. And he creates the problem. Yeah. But for me, yeah, obviously he's going to. Think about killing this guy. It's, it seems to, odd to me that that, that nobody. Like, also, he is a killer. He's established yeah. as a killer. Yeah. He's killed so many people. They've all killed so I, many people. I did a people. kill count video on him. It's in the tens of thousands. Nobody can take the moral high ground in these movies because everybody's <laughs> killed somebody in these. But also, yeah. But it, it seems odd to me that people can't even imagine that that a character like Luke Skywalker would have a moment of doubt or make a mistake. Remember. The original trilogy, it was yeah. just constant doubt and him yeah. falling down and losing his hand, nearly killing his dad at the end. Yeah, right. It, it was the fact <sighs> that he couldn't go. Mm, I'm thinking about it. Oh no, I've made a mistake. I'm sorry, kind of thing. Yeah, and that's led to all this drama. Yeah, mm. and I also believe that Kylo Ren, like the, both of their stories, mm. are true to them because he would have yeah, looked right. up and seen this monster with a lightsaber bearing over him. Yeah, yeah. And Luke would have seen Luke's, Luke's all this frightened boy. Of yeah. course they're going to see it the way they saw it. Yeah. Also, the Knights of Ren are Jedi, former Jedi, apparently. Okay, right. Assume. Because a lot of people said that the... the Praetorian Snokes, Guards. Uh, is that what they are? Yeah, it, yeah, that's what they're called. Okay, it's, very, right. it's very possible. Yeah. But I think we saw the Knights of Ren in the previous film. Yeah, I think they're different people. Yeah, yeah. I think that. So what yeah. do you think is going to happen? Do you think... Do you, We'll get to it in a minute, I guess. But do you think that uh, Kylo will bring them... Are they still, they're still alive? Uh, I, I assume so, but I think I, what is what does worry about the next film for me is this answered so many questions and concluded in in so many ways. Yeah, I think the next time next film is going to time jump in like five years, and maybe Carrie Fisher having passed on, Princess Leia's now passed on. Yep, because I think there were multiple moments in this film where they could have. They, I thought they killed her at the start. Yeah, right. And then I th- thought, oh, she's going to be the one to. Fly the ship through hyperspace into another ship, which was great. Oh by yeah, the way. yeah, we didn't. Everybody get to should do that all the time. Why do you need a Death Star? Just fire That's a ship true, at light yeah. speed into a planet. Or yeah, whatever. just just build a ship and <laughs> shoot it through. Yeah, not even a ship, just a box with an engine. Yeah, That's right. Fine. Yeah, just put one guy in it. That's true. But uh, no, I lo- what a, what great imagery that was. Great for yeah. one. But it almost caused a moment of silence in the cinema that I saw it at. Oh man, I can't believe you went to a wooing cinema. No, it was good. That. I liked it. I'm not into it. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, but what was I going to say? And then, uh, but I think the reason they didn't kill her off one, they wanted to keep the performance intact. Yep. And two, it's got that Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, or Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia reunion. And yes. I think this film needed that. Yeah, right. And I think that's an important moment that the fans needed to see for one. I think it's just nice for those. Two people in real Here's life. Here's a question. What are the dice? Have they been in anything else? Good question, else? Mason. I have the answer to that. I've done that Easter egg video, as you know. You can check it out in the comments, in the link description. Could Mason. you, could you it answer out. it for me now, though? I couldn't possibly, Mason. Oh. Okay, I'll answer for you. They're in A New Hope, apparently. Okay. I was like, I thought they were new. Same. They used to be regular dice, but they've added little symbols. Okay. Uh, they've always been kind of hanging Really? In the okay, right. And I suspect no, that they're going to find Han Solo. Yeah, yeah right, okay. Yeah. Maybe yeah. he wins the Falcon with them or whatever. Maybe yeah, he gets, for sure. He gets two half circle moons at a yeah <laughs> at a picture of a, a rock. I don't oh, know what else snake eyes. I don't know what else. Yeah, because I there. I was like, did did Luke have a very important moment with these in the original trilogy? Because yeah. I cannot recall that at all. I was confused how they disappeared and what that was about. Because I thought when Kylo Ren is talking with Ray, by the way, those sequences were great yes. where they were conversing through across mm. space and time or whatever. Yes. Also, people were saying there was no. There was no, they didn't establish that force power for Luke being a projection. 
They clearly did. They established it multiple times through the film because Kylo Ren says, I can see you, but I can't see your surroundings. Yeah, right. Which right. is exactly what Luke Skywalker did. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But what was I saying? <laughs> the uh, dice yes. disappear yep. after Luke dis like well after Luke disappears. But there's a bit where Kylo Ren is with Ray and he's got water on him. So yep. I thought that Luke was able to transport them using the force. Like, Cause it's a small, I like the idea that was kind of vague. I think it was fine that some of that ability, could he touch things? Could he not touch things? He could touch things. Yeah. So I think it's fine. I love the throw C-3PO wink. I thought that was yeah, right. amazing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what else can we talk about in this movie? Lots also, of- it's established that if anybody does that for too long, it'll probably kill them. Yes. Yeah. Right. And then it kills him. Yeah. Yeah. Twin sons. Good stuff. What do you think of Evil BB-8? Barely in it. Yeah, I, barely in it, exactly. Just yeah. to sell evil BB-8. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you so. thought, if you wanted a BB-8, but you thought he was a little too goody, two shoes and lame. Just colour him in. <laughs> colour him in, change the shape of his head. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. I like that droid design in general, though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what else can we talk about? I'm sure there's stuff we're forgetting. I genuinely think, and maybe like you said, I'll, I'll come around on it, but I think this is a great Star Wars film. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And that's... The Tooth. The Tooth. Uh, what I mean, we've got more things to say, obviously. Future, what do you, what do you think's next? I mean, I don't, I don't even know if I believe Kylo Ren is the the big bad villain because yeah, right. he's so conflicted. I mean, if he changes sides or dies, what, Hux is in charge? Well, maybe the Knights of Ren come back. Yeah, well, that's, that's what maybe, I was thinking. Maybe yeah. that's the... When you say you think, did you mention it earlier in the podcast and I tuned out? Uh, maybe. Okay, great. Well, anyway, <laughs> what I'm saying, what I, potentially maybe they come back and they're like, great time to rule the universe. He has a change of heart again. Double change of Double heart. Triple change, change of, of heart. Triple change of heart. And they're like, well, actually, we don't need you. We've been off training and, and Jediing about, and we've found all these Sith powers and whatever. Now we're the rules of the universe. Yeah. So now we're taking over, and then he maybe has to switch sides again. I don't know. I think you could genuinely bring him back. Yeah, for sure. Like, like I thought after The Force Awakens that you can't bring back this, back this, you can't redeem this character without leading to his death like yes. later because he killed Han Solo yeah right but I think very early on it's established in this film that this guy's not all bad and again he didn't kill his father because he hated mm. him not all bad looking either no, some- or is sometimes <laughs> so I don't know, know. <laughs> how does he do it I don't know is it, is it when his ears are covered I don't know yeah <laughs> yeah I, I'd believe him coming back but also I'd believe him not coming back at this point yeah right yeah. Mm-hmm. you know what else I also like I think uh, if they did a t- time jump on like this, just have Ray be like Luke Skywalker was in Return of the Jedi. He's pretty sure of himself. Yep. Because I think also she's got the books. She stole yep. the books. Yep. Uh, she's got a new lightsaber. Got a- Where is it? It's in the staff. No. It's a double lightsaber. I think in the she's staff. gonna. Re- she's gonna. She will do as have a staff ish lightsaber. Maybe a pike or a double edged yeah, lightsaber. Right. But I don't think. Well, she's got the crystal. Also, yep. where's Luke's green lightsaber? Don't do a green and a blue double bladed lightsaber. I think that's. No, I don't nah, think that's no, good, absolutely not. No. But where's Luke's green lightsaber, though? I don't know. Where is it? I don't know. Where was it the last time you checked? Well, Luke tried to kill his nephew with it. That's the last time. Oh, we saw for it. sure. Right, right, right. Yeah, I reckon one of the Knights of Ren has it. Which one, Daryl? Yeah, Daryl. <laughs> Yeah, that sneaky son. Sir Daryl <laughs> of the Knights of Ren has it. Yeah, I reckon maybe I reckon maybe one of them has it. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Yeah, I He's think got we two will. Lightsabers. Yeah, I think. It's naive of you to think this, Mason, that we won't ever see it again. Yeah, right. And maybe we won't see it in the next film, but we're definitely going to see yeah, it again. Right. I like that design of that lightsaber also. Mm. Where is it? Yeah. Okay, Yoda puppet, last thing. I didn't mind it. Looked real weird. Mouth looked weird. Yep. Uh, I don't think the puppet looked like the original one enough or it was lit weirdly. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. it looked fine. Mm-hmm. But I, I went back to Empire Strikes Back and I'm like, am I just remembering this fondly because this is a film that I know and love, but... I don't think that puppet looked right at all. Yeah, Sometimes right. it did. I like the voice. I I guess he can shoot lightning. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> That's right. right. That's the other thing. All every Star Wars film yep. pretty much establishes a new force power. Yes. And they've been doing it in the comics and and whatever. And they did it in the expanded universe for. They did a bunch of weird and crazy shit. The Emperor kept jumping from clone body to yeah, clone body. Right. It's okay to introduce a new force power if there's a man sitting on an island by himself for, you know. Half a dozen years, maybe he's worked out how to. Yeah, or maybe he sure. learned it before or whatever because uh-huh. he didn't have the force then. But yeah, no, I thought the puppet was weird, but I liked seeing Yoda again. Me too. I like how he's like young Skywalker. Ah, yeah, yeah, because he's young pretty, yeah, comparatively totally. to yes. Yoda, who's a dead ghost. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. 
That would have been a perfect opportunity for the Alec Guinness, Ewan McGregor uh, sex scene as well. Exactly. <laughs> That's what starts the fire. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. What did you think of the cave sequence? Which one? The one where she does the clicking and it's... I thought it was visually interesting, but I don't know what it means. I'm going to say visually interesting, ultimately forgettable, because yeah. I can't remember it. I just remember the mirror bit and that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fine, I guess. Yeah. Right, so uh, we better start uh, moving towards wrapping this up. Okay, though. let's wrap this baby up. I think we talked about it enough. Let me... Oh, you know what joke I really didn't think worked? When... Okay, there's there's two... There's a couple of jokes where Hux and Kylo Ren are in the... um. In the, in the ship and they're commanding the troops together. Yes. Uh, there's one where he throws him into the wall. He's like, you can't go down and fight Luke Skywalker. You stay, yeah, right, stay right. on top of the mission. And he just throws him into the wall and the pilot's like, yep, no worries. Yeah, I'm right. absolutely happy to land. Uh-huh. There's a bit where he repeats his order. He's like, fire on the whatever. And then Hux is like, fire on the whatever. And then yep. Kylo Ren does like a goo, like sure, a kind right, of like right, a right. goofy look. Yep. Also, Love the Millennium Falcon music chase through the through the mine. Yeah, right. I loved it. Always I mean, good. Porg aside, but that music is yeah, great. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I said this on Steel Wars. This also answered a, a riddle that I've uh, been been curious about since the original Star Wars, which is what happened to stun mode? It's back, baby. <laughs> it's back in a big way. It's back in such Nobody a big way. Nobody stunned anybody in the prequels. Yeah, they? that's They're right. They're cutting each other's legs off yeah. and shit. Boop, boop, boop. Boop. Pretty good. All right, we talked about it. It's oh, good did. stuff. I might watch it again next this coming week, and uh, I think you should. Yeah, yeah. I got some reviews here. Yes, it's from Michael. My God, I hope they kill Phasma in every single film. <laughs> I love this so much. She's such a pointless character that just keeps coming back to do more or less nothing. It's fantastic. More killing of Phasma. And please. again, if we can just have just in the start of the next movie, just an assembly line, and another body rolls in, <laughs> they install the head, and she's back again. I guess. This is from Troy. I uh, just got out of The Last Jedi. Didn't like it. Was hoping uh, for new stuff. Just got more nostalgia and a rehash from the original trilogy. Mm. There are Because there are different elements that are rehashed as well. Like yeah. this isn't all original stuff all the way through. Uh, uh, David said, uh, I saw Star Wars The Last Jedi. It was great. Leia flying through, flying through space like Superman was really weird though. Luke was a badass. The ending was satisfying, but it hurt my childhood. Uh, Mike says, I thought the episode eight was bad with cool moments. Mm. Uh, what do we got? See, so I'm talking about Mason. It's very divisive. Uh, Zoltan says, another thing I hated about The Last Jedi. Oh, yes. I'm not sure what the previous tweets were, but if you replace the... If you replace the word Snoke with that shark, it makes just as much sense since we know nothing about Snoke. For example, Luke tried to save Ben, but that shark had already gotten him. <laughs> yeah, nice. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's very good. I like that a lot. Uh, John says, uh, last year I was the worst movie ever. Finn's story was bland. Every battle was lackluster. Phasma wasted again. No payoff uh, with any of the episode uh, seven questions. What do they want from Phasma? Yeah, I don't, know, Phasma. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the Force is now a Chris Nolan plot breaking device. Uh, Luke, Luke fishing was fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sure. Uh, I loved, uh, Jake, I loved the half of The Last Jedi and was kind of cold on the other half. I bet we'll see an origin for those golden dice in the Solo movie. And I think that's it. Yeah. Nice. Well, you know what it's time for, Mason. Oh, what's it time for? It's time for what we reading. Oh, what we going to read. But before we do that, do you want some hate mail? I just remembered I got yeah, some hate absolutely, mail. absolutely, please. Okay, this hate mail is a mixture of people who are really savage on Star Wars, but also savage on me, Mason. Oh, what are the, what's this from? Uh, this is from my Star Wars review of The Last Jedi. Love it. This is from uh, Gianluca. You really don't understand. Oh, by the way, hate mail, but the hate has an eight in it is where I read eight pieces of hate mail, but it's never eight, but it's always hate, isn't it, Mason? It's always savage, yes. Yeah. And it's not every week, but it's it's every now and then. Yep. Uh, and sometimes people have a good point. Not really. They're all dumbasses. <laughs> I mean, there are genuine criticisms, but I'm not including those because they're not fun, are they? No, absolutely not. We want... We want... <laughs> What we want is for people who lose their mind over incredibly minor things. Exactly. Uh, Gianluca says, You really don't understand a single thing about movies and Star Wars in general. This movie sucks so hard it hurts to sit through it. Uh, This is from Cancho Camocho. This half-millennial slash half-feminist propaganda film is not the (laughs) Star Wars. This is something completely different than the original trilogy. That's always... (laughs) At least pre proof read your Yeah, right. Your no, I think that's correct. I think if you confuse then and then, you can just ignore their, sure, their okay. whole opinion, really. Uh, it's from, from Inglorious Pundits. You're such an a hole for this. This is not a good movie. Like at all. You ranked it fairly high. It's another rehash. Opinions are subjective. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> anyway, I, I shouldn't have to keep saying that. Yep. Uh, it's another rehash of the original, meaning episode nine will be the prequels. What? <laughs> you sold your soul for what? And then there's a bunch of exclama- exc- exclamation marks. 
look, man, I'll take money for a good review. <laughs> like, yeah. If somebody wants to offer it for me, yeah, I'll do right? it. I think it would be an interesting experiment to get paid for a review and then a week later be like, I got paid for this review. This was the process. Like, I'd just do it to be like, oh, can you sure, believe yeah. this is a thing? Yeah, right. I mean, I know it's disingenuous, uh-huh. but don't you think that would be interesting if somebody really paid for a good review? Yeah, right. Man. It would be nice if they did, wouldn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where do people think these checks are being cut from? You know what I mean? Uh, it's a really good question. Uh, it's from Sam's. Uh, do WTF? Two, ex- uh, two question marks. I just saw it. Why are you lying? It's trash and killed Star Wars for me. Okay, good, good work. Uh, side note, who cares if it killed Star Wars for you? I don't <laughs> care. Why was there no fucking lightsaber duel? That's from Pulse. Uh, like, what the fuck? I've never been so salty about anything in my life. Well, you've said it's a pretty <laughs> cruisy existence. Right, there. right. Your presentation is really unengaging. Sorry, I don't care what you think about anything based on your aggressive manner. That's fair enough. I mean, that's right back at you. <laughs> <laughs> Most unstructured. Oh, we're getting into just general hate of me, I guess. I oh, yeah, pretty good. Most guy. unstructured, unstructured video I ever saw. Uh, <laughs> I ever saw. Mm. Uh, it's from Tom Van Loon. How is this oh, a review? Van Loon, eh? <laughs> How is this a review? You're just rambling for ten minutes. Yep. Uh, I have uh, It's from Wagner This movie is overrated as fuck It's no made for fans I feel sorry for them it Seems like he <laughs> seems like he feels sorry for himself if Yeah I, a little I'm bit yeah, yeah 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 Episode 7 At last Was a good copy of episode 4 This movie was just Bland So many characters and wasted pl- And plot lines wasted There is no substance Ray is a still a Mary Sue And the worst main character of this franchise Worst Star Wars wow, movie. Wow, that's saying a lot. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Worst Star Wars movie along with episode one and two. The Empire Strikes Back and Rogue One remains as the best picture of the franchise. Those are two separate movies, just so you know. Yeah. He's, he's lumped them in together. And also, that is by no means the, the definitive... Re- people aren't like, listen, Rogue One is definitely <laughs> the best one. So. Some people really like it, mm. but nothing is definitive. I'm really starting to believe Disney pay the critics... Sorry, I'm really I'm starting to really believe Disney pay to the critics. I can't see where it got such incredible reviews. You can't see where you got such incredible Correct. reviews. You can see a lot of incredible reviews. Yep. You can They're find on them, YouTube. You can find them anywhere. They're on websites. Yeah. Uh, boring culture and history of fun. Uh, burn it all. We must. Magical magical knows everything. Strong independent woman spelled W O M Y N does. That's a quote from Yoda 2017. Oh, well, he knows what he's talking Even about. Even the prequels are better than this garbage. I liked, I didn't think Yoda was like, throw out everything before. I mean, it was in terms of the dogma of the Jedi. Yeah, right. But the way I took it was the way that I look at a lot of religions. And let's take Catholicism. Oh, because no, I was, here we go. I was raised Catholic. I, yeah, can, right. I can take as many shots as I yeah, want. Right. But basically, the core concept of Catholicism when, it, when you come down to it and the ceremony that's presented in church every week. And also, I don't have a problem with church. If you want to go to church... <laughs> Great, absolutely. Whatever you want to do, man. But the core idea was Jesus said, according to the books, yes. to, the, to the story, that the he, books. he sat down with friends and it was about breaking bread, sharing a meal, giving thanks and, and, and sharing in God's presence and love and all yeah, those right. kind of things. It, it's not about a man in a dress with a golden staff standing, uh, standing in front of everybody and just telling them that they're, that they're bad people and, right. and everything's wrong and gay people should go to hell and all that. I'm fairly certain Jesus was all about tearing down the temples and stripping away the dogma. He spent his time doing that before they killed him. Mm. That was the idea, to strip all that shit away, and suddenly Mm. it's gone back to what that was. And I think that's what Yoda was saying, that, no, the core ideas of this are good, but everything that we built around it is completely pointless. Right. Am I wrong? You're not wrong, but he could have said that 30 years ago. Yes, absolutely. Well, he (laughs) learned, I guess my point is. And again... You can be, you, I don't, like faith and religion, you can do whatever you want. But I think when it gets to the point where you're, you're getting away from the core, like what's the core of something really? You know what I mean? Yeah. I think when you get away from that and you look at the money that the church has that they're just holding on to, it's fucking disgusting, quite mm. frankly. And I shouldn't have got into that, <laughs> but that's, we're doing hate mail, Mason. Yeah, right. Yeah. Do you want to you do- send some hate mail. Yeah. Uh, this movie church. is fucking garbage, utter, utter garbage, just like this channel, dumbass. What the hell are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> la- do, should I keep doing this? Yeah, well, it's fine. I've got a lot. As long as we've got more than eight. Okay, how about I do, I, I got You an Idiot. Nice, <laughs> very good, that's a classic. How much money did Disney give you to, to do this review? This movie The answer's balls. none. It's ne- <laughs> they never give us any money. We never get any money. 
I think we need to boycott uh, the Disney for all the crap, that crap they did. Kathleen Kenny Ryan Johnson have taken Star Wars in direction fans were not Well, like. good luck boycotting That's Disney in a couple of years <laughs> when they own literally everything. Did you watch the other Star Wars movie? This is so bad. And this movie is really the worst, with an E on the end, Star Wars movie ever. Uh, oh, worst A. Star like War lost my family as fans. And then this is a, somehow embedded a link here. Uh, into the word fans <laughs> and my my father brother son and myself continuing a story is fine but to totally ruin the skywalker legacy is bull killing killing off luke was a big mistake they are going to lose thousands of fans that are generations deep hashtag bring back luke he's dead he's dead, dead. He's, never, he's never coming back he's never coming back. this guy's like i can bet my left nut you'll all agree that you'll hate this movie in a couple of months when all the hype's gone and like one more you'll like this mason it's from Baldy Hard Nut. This movie sucks and you know it. Be aware that major reviewers could be getting paid by Disney to say oh. this film was amazing. It's okay to dislike a thing. Yeah, for sure. It's okay. It, yeah. it just There's no great conspiracy. You can just not like a movie and other people like a movie. Mm. Whew. Whew. What a big week. You know big week for us. You know what it's time for then? Oh, what we read and what we're going to read. I'm doing a thing. I read Kill the Minotaur off your... It's good, right? I loved it. Yeah, it's good stuff. They're making a movie as well. Yeah, so you get in the ground floor, that's what I say. It was kind of... It was Troy, but alien. <laughs> yeah, see? Right, exactly, yeah. You, yeah. And that's, something, and that's something that I love that sometimes works, Kill the Minotaur, sometimes doesn't. Alien God, 4. I was going to say Gods of Egypt. <laughs> Something, something like that. Where I haven't seen it. Well, I love any anything where it's like, hey, remember the, the remember the myths of old? Actually, it was weird, gross biotechnology and, and alien stuff and whatever. Yeah. Was it an alien? No. I think it was an alien. Well, maybe. I liked that they didn't really explain it, though. Yeah. Because it looked like alien tech, but it could have just been from the gods. Yeah, well, yeah. maybe the gods are. See, that's the thing. That's, yeah. that's where I'm Well, there's like, going to be more, it yeah. seems. So we'll bloody, we'll get yeah, into that. But so I think that's a great recommendation, Mason. Thank I think you. It's, it's got good. a lot of swearing. It's got a lot of blood. Yeah. Uh, it's got people getting torn it's apart. It's real gross. I like the Minotaur design as well. Because yeah. it's not just a half bull man. It's yeah. a terrifying, like John Carpenter nightmare. <laughs> Who hates itself, clearly. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so that's a good one. Uh, oh, which reminds me, I'm not sure if it's still going, but if it is... Uh, our friends over at Serious Issues are currently doing a Serious Issues Awards. Oh, so if you want to, if you have opinions on the best comics of the year, pop over to their group. Yeah, I can't remember the link, but I'm just search for Serious Issues on Facebook. Yes, and uh, just click through there, or, or go um, just go to Andrew Levin's Twitter feed. Yeah, at Lev, Lev Dog, and uh, he knows. Cool. He knows it'll be on there. So if you want to vote, make, uh, do some votes, get in there. And if you can't find it, ask him on Twitter. If you if you could, he'll know. Then he'll know. Then he'll you'll know. know. Then we'll all know. Great. Uh, so that's good. I am gonna probably watch um, Last Jedi again. I guess. Yes, I think you should. What are you gonna read this week? Well, I actually started watching uh, season two of Wolf Creek. Oh yes. And lo and behold, guess who appears, Mason? Tofop's uh, own Charlie friend Clawson. of the show, Charlie Clawson, That's appears right. in that show. What is he in? What role is he in that movie? Well, I don't want to spoil the... it, Mason. Okay, then. But it's a, basically, it's a bunch of tourists who Is he get... the wolf? No, he's the creek. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's very convincing. Hmm. Uh, but it's it's if people don't know, Wolf Creek was is an Australian horror movie, and it's it got a sequel, and then it got a first season. It, it's basically what if Crocodile Dundee was a really horrible murderer? Correct. Yes. And I like the series in general. A lot of people don't like the second one, the second uh-huh. movie. Yep. Uh, I like it. I like it all because I really hate the character, like the 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 villain, and he's really terrifying. Yeah. Right. Uh. So. Uh. Yeah. Charlie Clawson's in that, but it's definitely worth checking out. Also. Just listen to Tofop in general because it's real fun. It's real fun, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Can, uh... Also, they did a great Justice League episode recently where they kind of muddle their way through what happened to Justice League. Oh, nice, League. okay, great. It's very funny. Right, I'll check that out. Yeah. I'm way behind on all I'm way behind on all of our Planet Broadcasting. Uh... Not this one, though, right? No. I mean, you've been here every week. You've heard most of them. I think so. I mean, you've tuned in and out, obviously. <laughs> very obviously. <laughs> uh, you ready? Got that letters yeah, thing? Yeah, letters. Ready? Let's do some letters. Woo! Woo letters. The classic one was letters, oh letters, we love you, some letters, they're only a day away. We're going to hear right now, we're going to do letters. They're never a day away, they're always always right after the letters theme. Correct. That theme is wrong, I, mean, I just realised. Nah. <laughs> That's great. But it says we're going to do it right now. That's Here's true. Letters, so yeah. And why does it say they're only a day away? That's how the song goes. No, I understand that's how the song goes. 
But then he says they're right here. So it's correcting the song. Correct. So it is right. Wow, okay. Yep. Yeah, wow. Well, it's very late here. It's okay. Yeah, it is. I should yeah. listen to my own letters theme that I didn't write. Uh, so a lot of people, last week we talked about maybe Quentin Tarantino is going to do a Star Trek movie of some sort. Uh, we've had a lot, of, a lot of letters and tweets about that. Thomas Husband uh, has said... Uh, as someone who's watched Star Trek for his entire life, he's not keen for this to happen. Right, yeah. He says, from what I've heard, they're wanting to adapt a two-part episode from Next Generation involving time travel and the Klingon Federation War. Okay. So that's like a ninety two two episodes, 90 minutes. That's basically already a feature film. Don't personally see the point in remaking these episodes, but gorier and with more N-bombs sounds like a bad time. Yeah, absolutely. I can understand that. Yeah. I guess... Yeah, if they are if they are just going to do a remake of a really good episode, why, why are you yeah. doing it? But yeah. a lot of other people have tweeted at us and th- have mentioned something that didn't even occur to us when we talked about it. A Mirror Universe episode. A Mirror Universe yeah, movie. Yeah, absolutely. What about yeah. this? A, oh, also, a uh, friend uh, who wrote that letter, he has a podcast on YouTube called the Nerd Rhetoric Podcast. He's just... Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm, maybe, mm-hmm. Che- maybe check that out if you like. Uh, but... What I, I think that I don't know if they'd do it, but I would love to see a movie set in the the current continuities mirror universe, so you could get Christopher Pine and Donald Gleason. Don, Donald Gleason. Donald, Donald Gleason. You get Chris Pine. You get Zach Quinto. You get all the regulars. Yeah, and they but, skip into the. But Star they've got Wars weird. Universe. But they've got weird <laughs> facial hair. Yes. and they're, and they're just evil. I they think punching be mirror versions of themselves, or it's just a complete mirror version movie. I think it's just the mirror universe. I think it just takes place entirely in the mirror universe and it's just the bad guy. It's going to be so confusing. For... Yeah. So at the start, what if someone just says, Quentin Tarantino's there, or he attends every screening, he goes, yep. it's it's Star Trek, but it's the mirror universe. It's yeah. ba- Everything's bad. Yeah. Ships are inside out. I think what Dogs happens... Dogs cats. Yeah, what happens is you have... You started in the the normal universe and they're all at like a greasy spoon diner. Yeah. All the, all the, they're, in, they're in the Enterprise's... Greasy Spoon Diner that's in the middle of the Enterprise and they're all just having a Reservoir Dog style chat about various things and one of them's like, what about a universe when we're all evil? And then it just cuts hard cut to the Mirror Universe. Weird. We yeah. have moustaches and whatnot. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. I love it. What kind of moustache would Chris Pine have? A Hitler moustache. <laughs> oh no! That's the worst one! Remember when Michael Jordan tried to bring it back? Oh, yeah, that's right, very briefly. I mean, you're, you're very good at dunking a basketball, but it's, I don't think the world's ready. <laughs> I think you need to give it another 100 years. Okay, this is from Austin. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Uh, you, can, you can send an email through to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com, but you can also hashtag on Twitter Weekly Planet Pod, as Austin has done, and he's asked, who should play Wolverine now? I can't remember who else on Twitter said, do they go with someone five foot three? Is there anybody yeah. who could do it who's five foot three and known? Is Ronnie uh, Corbett dead? Ronnie Corbett is very dead. Oh, no. Both the Ronnies are dead. Both the two Ronnies are dead, I think. Damn. Shared grave? Yeah, Fit for them sure. both in one coffin, I guess? Yeah. They, yeah. Mm. I mean, they didn't die at the same time. They had to dig it up and dump, yeah. dump the second one. I yeah. know how funerals work, Mason. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, some people said Oscar Isaac. What do you reckon about that? Is he too handsome? Well, Hugh Jackman's too handsome. Exactly, right? Yeah. So what what do you do with this version? Do you make him like the scrappier... You make him Latino. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm saying. Ah, okay. uh, good question. You make him scrappy. I think you definitely make him scrappier. Yeah. I think you make him kind of more ragged and... Because if you make him... The only other option is to make him more handsome than Hugh Jackman. Can't make him more handsome. Make him... Exactly. A, it's impossible, and B, B. it'd be more. It'd be a more generic handsome. Yeah. Like, it'd be a, like, a, like a CW... Yeah, exactly. ...kind of actor. Yeah, so. yeah. It'd be Archie. <laughs> oh, I'd be Archie, so handsome. I mean, he's good in that. So many he's skills, that, that yeah, kid. Yeah. Uh, I'm really bad at casting. Yeah, same. Yeah. What about sure Danzig? Was... Oh, as they always <laughs> promised. Yeah. He wanted to do... He maybe nearly did it. Maybe it's finally the chance for that other guy who gave up the role. Remember who's like... Remember that guy? Russell other guy was... Crowe? No, not Russell Crowe. Mel Gibson? No. Uh, that guy. Oh, Doug Ray Scott. Doug Ray Scott, no. exactly. Right? No, no, he wouldn't. Okay. I don't think he'd, he's got the chops, quite frankly. But maybe, or the he mutton do, chops. maybe he does have to be younger, though. I think you definitely have to go younger. Yeah. You don't make him fifty because then you yeah, get right. like three movies out of him max. Yeah, right. I think you'd, you'd get like someone mid thirties. It's been said a lot of times, but Tom Hardy would be a great Wolverine, right? But he's Venom, so mm. you can't. I think maybe you go lesser. You go lesser known. I yeah, think, right. Yeah, but so that's hard to cast because. I don't know who that is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it's lesser known. What about the? As somebody tweeted at me, I think that 
You know the guy that looks like Matt Damon? He was in Breaking Bad. He looks like Matt Damon, but he's not Matt Damon. You know that guy? Oh, Jesse something. Yes. His name is yeah, Plemons? Yeah. Jesse Plemons? May, yeah, I think it could be, yeah. I mean, is, that guy. is he too potato headed? I think he might be too potato headed. Yeah. They can do wonderful things with, with prosthetics potatoes. these days. You can do and chips. Potatoes. Yep. You can do a sauerkraut. Yeah, you, you can, can do a cross cut, cross cut, crinkle cut chip. Exactly. You, you can, can like do a, a baked those, potato. One of those grid chips. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You mm. can do a mash, maybe. Maybe some oh, gravy love on a mash. There. Maybe some peas. Oh, that's right. My vegetable <laughs> combination. My favorite vegetable combination. Here we go. We can come back to it. Corn next on week. the cob and butter. There that's, it is. No, no. You have to have a vegetable, another vegetable. And mash them together. How about corn on the cob yes. and just a, like a carrot in your other hand that you don't have to eat? <laughs> okay, that sounds really good. Yeah, <laughs> great. Sounds cool. You can turf it at a passing car. Mm-hmm. This is from uh, Press Start FVR. Uh, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. I'm going to start listening to movie commentaries. Which one should I do first? I think probably Force Awakens is probably a good one to start on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We'll do some more. Any of them are fine. Yeah. Uh, probably not Amazing Spider-Man 2. <laughs> no. It's not a very good movie. Running on fumes Yeah, I don't there. remember it was a big, a very... Or was it just The Amazing Spider-Man? I don't even remember. I don't know. If we did one and two, right? I don't think so. Okay, anyway, then. Anyway, it's not worth listening to. Yeah. Yeah. I think people like the Batman v Superman one as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the Suicide, Suicide Squad one, I think, is, is, is fine, but it's not as bad a movie as... Well, you remember it being. Yeah, We right, both kind exactly. of finished and went... That's fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, this is from David. Uh, what do we got here, David? Uh, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Do you think R2-D2 and C-3PO will be shoehorned into the Han Solo solo movie? And if so, how so? Ooh. They might have to break with convention here, Mason. Unless they pass them. Maybe Han Solo stealing a, a crystal from a crystal... Warehouse. So is is the is the canon that R two D two every film has remember? Is it that C three PO has had a memory wipe, but R two D two hasn't? Okay, right. But right. he could run into Han Solo and he could be knocked over at a market square. That's or whatever. true. Yeah, I think it'll be something along those lines. Do you think lines. they'll definitely do it? I think uh, they will, but it will be really contrived. Yes. Or maybe yeah. he does some work for the rebellion. Maybe this Han Solo solo movie will surprise us. I hope it will, Mason. Yeah. I don't have my fingers crossed. This Last I mean, of Jedi surprised us in many ways. Yeah. So. I actually, going into this, I wasn't like, this is going to be great. I was mm. like, I hope this is good, but yeah, right. I don't know. Mm. People are going to be, people are really pissed that Ryan Johnson's doing another three, though. Yeah. But I want right. to see it. Me too. Yeah. Um, even just, just so we can do something weird. Just yeah. something real weird. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, uh, that's the show for this week, Mason. We did it. Remember, though, you can hashtag Jedi Skills with a Z, mm-hmm. and uh, hopefully, one of hopefully no one of you will win it. We'll announce <laughs> yes, that's it next right. week. Um, we'll get that. Hopefully, one of you will win it. I mean, yeah, maybe, hopefully, maybe, maybe we'll Mason check. will win it. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> but uh, no, Mason won't win it. I'll make sure of it. Oh man, god damn it! But yeah, uh, so yes, send your pictures, send your any kind of tweet. Hashtag Jedi skills to myself or Mason. And we'll pick one. Yeah, we'll do as many as we bloody well want. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else? Uh, we'll do That'll do it, I show. think, yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, if you want to, you know what you should do? Go to planetbroadcasting.com. We have it. The site's up, it's happening. The site's, site's up, planetbroadcasting.com. We're yeah. going to record some new audio stings. We did some ads we did not agree with to get that domain That's name. That's right. <laughs> no. Uh, All sorts of casinos. So many casinos. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's what's the good thing about that website uh, now is that you can. There's a player, so if you hit play on any podcast, it goes to the bottom, and then you can click around and it plays through. Nice. So you don't have to open it a new tab. You can stream it and then jump around the site, and it's very fine. nice. So looks that's, great. It's really, it does look great really stuff. great. Yeah. Does it have links to all our uh, Bandcamp? Got and everything on all there. If you, you want, if you want to say hi to us, just click yeah. on. This has taken more time than it would have normally said for me to go to, to go to pla- uh, Weekly true. Planet Pod at Facebook He's and really Twitter and Gmail made and, a and Bandcamp. Dog's breakfast of but this, anyway, mate. just but for in future, just go to planetbroadcasting.com if you want to say hi. Raw Collins is bloody running the show over there. He's doing a fantastic Primo. job. Yeah. There's also the Planet Broadcasting Facebook group, Planet Broadcasting. Great mates. Yep. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Is that also on planetbroadcasting.com? You better believe it. Uh, you can also click on the Amazon affiliate link in our episode description. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Teas on tpublic.com. If you want to buy Weekly Planet Tea, I'd love to see them out in the wild. Yes. Uh, 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 I don't know if I have it here, but uh, somebody out in the world, uh, our friends at Auntie Donna, uh, some uh, some listeners went to see Auntie Donna and they were in the Weekly Planet show. Ah, that's so awesome. So I've got a photo with all the boys against their will. 
with someone wearing a weekly planet t-shirt. <laughs> Can you so send that to me? I'll send it to you. So that's pretty great. Uh, let's see. And uh, let's see. Um, what else? What else do we do here? It's very late right now. I don't know, man. It's so late. It's too late. Yeah. Next week we're we doing best of the year. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Is that the last episode before the end of the year next week? Who knows? Yeah. Who does know? Who I think knows? it is actually. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. That'll do it. Uh, what else do I say here? I've, th- I've thrown my own rhythm off. Thank you to everybody who listens. I should say that up top. Thank you to everybody who yeah, listens. Great. And I you, should say at the start and the end and in the middle. If you tell a friend, it's very helpful. Oh, if you tell great. 100 friends, it's 100 times as helpful. <laughs> Correct. Yep. It's proportion to the number of people you tell is how helpful it is. It is, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and reviews are great as well on yeah. iTunes. Good reviews. Yeah. Yes, obviously, Mason. Mm. Did I yeah. not say good reviews? No. Was that not implied? Was the implication not present? Look, no. Okay, then. Okay, good. You just, um, just give people a little guidance, you know? And that is the tooth. That's the tooth. <laughs> now, speaking of, I'm taking this bloody lane. It's not the end off. of the show yet, Mason. No, no, no. <laughs> it is for me. There you go. Now, again, as I feel like you're going to lose another bet and you're going to have to wear it. <laughs> no, look, then what I think, I think we've established off air that whoever makes the dumbest call, <laughs> like every time somebody makes a, sp- a spectacularly dumb call, I'll have to wear the lanyard if I make a dumb call. Yep. If you make a dumb call, you don't get to wear the uh, lanyard. What? That's, the, that's the trick. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. All yeah. right. Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Did you see Jumanji? No. Apparently it's fine. It's not out yet, though. Oh, yeah. I got a screening that I didn't oh, go to. Oh, lardy da well. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so next are we gonna do? We're gonna do awards next week. I so guess so. Yeah, and nice. Jumanji. Oh, awards and Jumanji. <laughs> <laughs> we should watch a bunch of stuff that we've missed during the year. Okay. To catch up on. Nice. I watched It Comes at Night. Which one's that again? I really liked it. Uh, it's the Joel Edgerton horror film. Oh. Is, but yeah. Anyway, this is all in the show, Mason. As nice. well. I love yeah, it. Put Good. the lanyard back on. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.